A winter storm has taken grip on the Dallas metropolitan area. Yesterday, 62 degrees. Right now, 26 degrees. And with the wind chill factor, it's about minus one. Well, the tarp was on the field all morning, but it's been taken off. And in fact, pregame activities have been curtailed somewhat. It's very slick and the footing is going to be difficult. For the Dolphins, they are not a good bad weather team. In games below freezing in their history, they've won just three out of nine games. And this is famed Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. The traditional Thanksgiving football feast continues here with the defending Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys hosting the Miami Dolphins. Weather, an enormous factor today. The temperature in Dallas, 26 degrees with a strong wind, a mix of rain and sleet. The wind chill, five degrees above zero. On this Thanksgiving day at Texas Stadium, the path to the Super Bowl for these two outstanding teams is an icy one. Chill factor around zero, temperature on the field 26 degrees, sleet in this weather storm that has struck central Texas. The Dolphins and the Cowboys, and we welcome you on this Thanksgiving day. Dick Enberg along with Bob Trumpy, two marquee teams, and lots of hopes being realized and dreams, and one belonged to a man almost 40 years of age, too old to play professional football. Uh -uh, Steve DeBerg quarterbacks the Miami Dolphins today. Dick, he was unemployed two weeks ago. He was in Tampa, comes to Miami. When he got off the bus this morning, he all he had on was a short sleeve <laughs> shirt. Uh, he has no jacket whatsoever, but he said he comes to Miami and he is looking at and now playing with the best offense he has ever been a part of. Now, that's, this is the sixth team he's ever played for. One of them was San Francisco. He thinks this is better than San Francisco's offense. Better wide receivers, he yes. said, and he likes the way that offensive line is constructed to protect the passer. Now, let's go to the Dallas Cowboys. When healthy, everyone says, hey, Super Bowl, chance to repeat the uh, title one in January at the Rose Bowl, but not today. Not today. They're not healthy with the Troy Aikman coming off the hamstring trying to do what he can for the offense jimmy johnson told us he encouraged troy throw the ball away don't run with it and with the case of emmett smith he practiced yesterday in the offensive part of the practice tried to stretch out his thigh as best he could but in the last four days two trainers have lived with emmett smith giving him treatment on that bruised thigh every waking moment to try to get him ready Cowboys won the toss and will receive. We should point out, as you can see, the snow sweeper trying to clear at least the yard lines, that anywhere there is paint, like the blue star in the center of the field or the numbers that mark the strikes, it is very treacherous. So we'll see some slipping and sliding whenever athletes hit anything that's painted. That's rock ice. Kevin Williams, who played at the University of Miami, and Brock Marion, our deep for Dallas. Marion, a rookie from Nevada, Reno, and we're underway on Stojanovic's spinner to Williams at the seven. Gingerly moving. Fumbles and recovers his fumble at the 26-yard line. And as you said, Bob Trumpy, special teams could decide this game. Here come the Cowboys and Troy Aikman coming back after the hamstring injury suffered two and a half games ago. And these are the men who will protect him well today. You can be sure that's the charge from Jimmy Johnson. Tuna Newton, Stemtowski, Gogan, and Williams. The backfield for Dallas. Emmett Smith does start. Daryl Johnson, so versatile. Irvin and Harper, brilliant outside. And Jay Novacek was led all tight ends and catches in the 90s. Williams comes in when they go three wide. From the 26, Aikman comes out throwing. And it's off the fingertips of Michael Irvin on the far sidelines. Defense for Miami. Cross is having another terrific year. Ten and a half sacks. Klingbeil tough against the run. Golick the ex-Eagle. Marco Coleman. Hollier replaces Grimsley at outside linebacker. Offerdahl returns. He uh, came back actually last week. And Brian Cox, mighty tough, a pro bowler. Vincent and Brown on the corners. Williams and Oliver at safety. And those are the men that really are going to see the pressure. Vesti Jackson, the nickelback, because their, their footing is so treacherous when they don't know where that receiver is going. Second and ten. Emmett Smith tries that sore quadriceps muscle and uh, really didn't have much burst, did he? And Brian Cox celebrates the tackle. Dick, what Dallas is trying to find out here in the initial stages is 
Can Emmett Smith carry the ball like Emmett Smith normally can? He can fill two roles today. He can either carry the ball and be the normal Emmett Smith, or he can be a decoy. Miami on the other side of the ball trying to figure out the same thing. Is it the real Emmett Smith, or is it the decoy Emmett Smith? And if it isn't the real Smith, then they can adjust their whole defensive scheme to stop the outside receiver and uh, not focus on the running game. Third and long for Aikman. Through the fingertips of Michael Irvin again. So two passes, Irvin unable to pull in either. And on the first Ellis possession, three and out. On the kick is John Jett, who leads the NFL in net punting yardage over 40 a kick. Nick already, look what they're trying to do here. They're trying to, as best they possibly can, zone these outside guys. So it's difficult for Aikman to hit the big receivers on this team, Harper and Irvin. Uh, this is neither one of these coaches know what their teams can do at this point. They're, they're just out there guessing. John Jett, a year ago, he was selling copying machines in Greenville, North Carolina. Talk about giving thanks. He delivers a beautiful kick, and a flag is down. Jett was hit as he delivered the ball. O.J. McDuffie, the rookie from Penn State, out of bounds, but it looks as if this is coming back, and Dallas will get a first down on the penalty, or is it just is it running into or a personal foul if it's a personal foul it's a first down if it's running into with that good a kick dallas may decline the penalty bill bates the acting captain it was running into the kicker five yard penalty so jimmy says hey take the kick i don't blame miami for trying to put pressure on the punter i mean anything you can do here to disrupt timing in the early stages of this game, Dick, is very sound coaching in my estimation. So the Dolphins offense takes the field. Richmond Webb, a Dallas native and one of the best offensive linemen in the league. Sims, Dellenbach, Widener, and Keller. Another ex-Eagle. De Berg in his second start in Miami. Higgs had uh, over 100 yards again rushing last week. Byers, another ex-Eagle. Fryer having a big season. Ingram, a giant a year ago. And Keith Jackson, a tight end. Three wide. Terry Kirby, the rookie from Virginia, to the backfield. Tony Martin, the third wide up. They start at the 34-yard line. The toss to Higgs who was drafted by the Cowboys out of Kentucky, and he gets a uh, couple. Tony Casillas in on the stop, number 75. Tolbert, Casillas, Maryland, and Haley, the front four for Dallas. Haley uh, continues to Harris quarterbacks. Edwards, Ken Norton playing with a torn bicep tendon is in the middle. Darren Smith, a rookie from Miami, moving into the starting lineup early this year. Kevin Smith and Larry Brown at the corners, and Woodson and Everett at safety. Second and seven into the eyes of Norton, one of the Super Bowl heroes. The Bird's first pass. And he goes to the tight end, Jackson, protecting the ball. He's hit just shy of the first down by Norton and Woodson. Uh, one of the things the uh, Miami Dolphins have done, they've, they've infused a little toughness into this football team from the NFC East, picking up all, the, all of these former Philadelphia Eagles, Jackson being probably uh, the greatest asset and when you see short little patterns like that, that's just Don Shula and Gary Stevens experimenting here. What can we do? They'll stretch it a little more, but we start out with just a five or six yard pattern for completion. Third down a yard. Faked by the bird, one of the best at that. And wide open in the middle is Kirby, and he falls down. And well down, the ball is knocked free. No fumble, no fumble. He was already down. Darren Smith made the tackle, and there's the field, perhaps costing Miami a touchdown. Kirby was all alone, but couldn't hold his footing. Good play action fake by Steve DeBerg. He's always done that throughout his career, and Kirby comes so wide open, he turns around and then, uh, I think they call that a salt cow but he <laughs> lands on his outside well, edge. Thank and, you, Brian <laughs> Boitano. I didn't, I didn't realize. 19 yards on the play. And uh, Miami Dolphins are in Dallas territory inside the 40-yard line. Uh, Steve DeBerg told us last night that he's, most teams that he's caught on with, he's caught on at the beginning of the season, he comes to Miami, he's got to pick up this offense on the dead run. 
Dan Marino sits next to him in every meeting, going over every single play, so he knows as much as he can possibly absorb. But doesn't wear any wristband with plays. He said, I'm, I want to know it. Made only one mistake last week, and his first start has trouble setting himself, and then goes long for Fryer. And Fryer skidding off the field of play. Larry Brown defending for Dallas. Tough for those defensive linemen to get a good push off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, especially the light ones. Haley is not a particularly big guy, and he's also facing Richmond Webb, who is a very, very good pass rusher and knows how to hold and get away with it. Richmond from Dallas had to get 35 tickets for family members today. And Haley doesn't have the numbers of the pass rush this year because of the bulging disc in his back, but that's a good matchup, 78-94 all day. Second and 10 from the Dallas 38-yard line. The Bird has a man and a good catch by Mark Ingram. He's used to playing in tough weather, the ex-giant. And they'll spot that one 11 yards, first down. And Miami's choice here at the outset is a lot of play action fakes. You see the cornerback looking in there. Ingram does a good job of keeping his feet underneath him. Mike Ditka talked about you can't move on this field. He's right, but there is a way to run patterns in snow, and that's the short, choppy steps, keeping over your feet, not trying to stretch out too much. Ingram did a great job for a nice completion. The Berg, who played a college ball decades ago at San Jose State, three for four off the top of the game. And he's going to throw on first down. The middle. Boy, tough catch by Keith Jackson at the 22 of Dallas. Cam Norton, still another tackle, assisted by Dixon Edwards. Uh, I'm not sure when this happened, but when teams stopped holding up the tight end, guys like Jackson started making millions of dollars. It didn't used to be that easy, but they allow tight ends to just get down in there, and that's like a rebound underneath the basket. Jackson with that big body can make those catches. Five yards on the play, second and five at the Dallas 22. Furby and Byers behind the bird. Who throws again? Dumps it off incomplete to Kirby and breaking it up was Darren Smith. Mm. Remember what he told us last night? I, I asked Steve, I said, look, you come in here, you come in here, Steve DeBerg comes in here with a new responsibility. What's the one thing that you don't want to do? Throw the interception. Well, it almost happens here. Uh, Haley trying to get to the quarterback. DeBerg could have run for the first down. That ball bounced off Kirby's uh, shoulder pads. And that's what you want to try to avoid. Look at the stuff coming down. This sleep coming down here on these guys. Meanwhile, in Miami, folks watching, mid-70s, we understand. Almost 50 degrees warmer. Third and five for DeBerg. And he has to eat it at the 27-yard line. The sack to Tony Casillas and Tony Tolbert. Casillas, who was a star at Oklahoma, Tolbert at UTEP. What Dallas is doing here is trying twists to try to get some pressure on DeBerg just to disrupt some of the timing. This time it works. Russell Maryland comes in there and flushes DeBerg out of the pocket, and Tolbert makes the sack. Doug Peterson kneels inside the 35. This will be a 44-yard attempt by Stojanovic. Well within his range, but what kind of footing will he get? Oh, my! A line drive right to Everett. And, of course, that's returnable. And I don't know why he hesitated. He might have been able to go all the way. He went out of bounds a considerable time ago, but you can't see the sidelines. And Stojanovic has to deduct points on the fall. <laughs> that program, the free program, <laughs> diminished somewhat by this effort. They even cleared the spot there, but you can see his, his plant foot gave away immediately. And then 27 Everett wasn't sure what to do with the football. Norton out there is a lead blocker. This is a good spot, but watch his left foot. I mean, just slid right out from underneath him. So now it appears field goals aren't going to work, at least from 44 yards. 44-yard attempt for Rye, and now Dallas with the ball, and Jimmy Johnson says, come on, Everett, this might be a great chance to score. 
Welcome back to Texas Stadium. The sleep continues to fall. Stoyanovic sliding on his 44-yard field goal attempt. And Dallas takes over at the 39. Emmett Smith still a tailback. Aikman complete to Alvin Harper. And Harper out of bounds at the 45. It appears that uh, from the DeBerg series that better luck throwing the ball up the middle of the field the wide outs the long wides especially as Dallas tried in the first possession tougher to catch and uh, control Dick I think that's an excellent point and I think the other thing we learned off the two first offensive drives is this game is for now until the end of it a field position football game coaches got to be thinking about how we can uh, maintain good field position from the Dallas 46 second and three and a half and there goes Emmett Smith for a first down Nothing wrong with that spurt by Smith with a badly bruised quadricep muscle in front of the thigh. He thought it was broken on Sunday. Yes. As a matter of fact, I talked to Kevin O'Neill, the trainer of the Dallas Cowboys, yesterday at practice. They discovered that Thurman, that Emmett Smith injured his thigh in high school. And there was a slight bit of calcification on the femur, a little raising of, of calcification. That added to the bleeding in the leg, and that's why it was so swollen and they had to uh, undergo so much extra treatment to try to get him ready. It's the right side. Play action take and the throw. Complete for Irvin and then he drops it. Irvin had it for a moment. Back to uh, Emmett Smith. He had not missed a start since a college sophomore. So durable and a man who also doesn't fumble. With all the touches that he has this year, he's fumbled only one time. And they play action fake to Emmett Smith here to try to draw the linebackers. And Irvin with the little slant. Actually, J.B. Brown does an excellent job in coverage there. Putting his bed. You got big receivers like Michael Irvin. Hitches, trick outs. I think those work. 225 straight passes by Dallas quarterback without an interception. Nothing there for Emmett on this play. Struggles for a yard or two to the Miami 48-yard line. Yeah, but you know, Dick, you say nothing there for Emmitt Smith. But psychologically, what that does for the Dallas Cowboys is it keeps the Miami defense spread. You've still got to respect the heart and soul of this offense, and that's Emmitt Smith. So Smith, who has led this National Football League in rushing the last two years still had designs on it although with his injury and uh, late reporting missed the first two games starts today with uh, around 750 yards rushing Aikman dumps it off to Smith and Smith fighting to get to the first down yard six takes quite a hit Chris Green number 42 uh, Nickelback coming up from the secondary Dick to this point Emmett Smith looks fine he didn't pick up the first down, but if this kid can play this football game, when they got back from Atlanta, they took him to the training room, and the first thing they did was bend his leg and keep it bent to try to have all the blood surface. They then straightened it out. They began treatment sometimes until 2 o'clock in the morning. An assistant trainer went over to his house and stayed there with Emmett Smith. Yesterday was the first day run. He also told us, no needles. I am not injecting any part of my body to play a football game. Fourth and two at the Miami 42. A high floater. McGuffey, the fair catch at the 24-yard line. So the Dolphins with it at the 24. No score first quarter. Oh, this part of Texas, you uh, don't often see those fires in the hearth, but it's going to feel good today. Fans are afraid this uh, terrible weather. Severe winter storm warnings throughout this part of Texas, Central Texas. 23-yard line Miami after a short 17-yard punt by John Jeff. DeBerg to Byers. Byers first to Terry. And look at him go. He's on his way. Byers, will he be caught? Keith Byers all the way to the goal. as he outraced Kevin Smith to the goal line. That is the longest run in Keith Byers' terrific career. Excellent blocking up front. And the thing that the offensive line did was keep their feet. And then I'm shocked at Keith Byers' speed. 
We're talking about a 250-pound fullback, H-back, tight end, whatever you want to call him. And whoa, he got the football in. He didn't get in. The ball did. And Byers does a nice belly flop right in the end zone. 25 yards longer than his previous high career run. Keith Byers goes 77 for the 6 nothing lead. And now the adventure of the extra point by Stojanovic. He punches it through, and the Dolphins lead 7-0. Dick, at the end of this run, and Keith Byers is going to be asking for the oxygen. Watch the football. He's got it in his left arm, takes it out, puts it in his right. And the, uh, the ball goes in the end zone. Well, Byers is known for having big and wide feet. And with his weight, perhaps on this field, he might be the best runner of all for Don Shula. Shula celebrates the early lead. <laughs> One of the ex-Eagles, Keith Byers, said he grew up with dad, the Pittsburgh Pirate baseball fan, Roberto Clemente, was his first hero. And uh, Byers with an icy home run run, 77 yards to give the Dolphins a 7-0 lead. As Kevin Williams, 85, Brock Marion, 31, two rookies wait for Stojanovic's kickoff. Singleton and a flag is down with it while they sort out the flag let's go back to the touchdown run all right look at the single blocking everybody's got a man it's just nothing to it and Byers comes shooting up here and then watch the block by Keith Jackson on Charles Haley at the end it's an absolutely push and shove down shove job he gets Haley down and I'm shocked that Keith Byers can outrun Kevin Smith that blows me away. I mean, we're talking 250 to 180, and Smith is supposed to have outstanding speed. Again, here's the isolate of the one of the key blocks. Haley can't get his hands away from Keith Jackson. Byers runs right by. You know, uh, Jackson and Mark Ingram, Irving Fryer. Personal foul, face mask by number 55 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, Singleton, who made the tackle, a 15-yard penalty. It's on Chris Singleton of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, there you see he grabs a hold of the face mask and just spins him around. Back to Jackson on that block. He and Ingram and Fryer. Fryer, they've got a bet that the one with the fewest knockdown blocks at the end of the year has to feed the rest of them. And they really take pride in their blocking. And uh, Don Shula, even in talking about Irving Fryer, yesterday said, I have never seen a wide receiver block better than Fryer. I said, hey, Coach, that covers a lot of great years for you. And I was going to mention it that if Jackson got in that bet with Ingram and Fryer, I would take him to lose. <laughs> Keith is not known as a great blocker. Well, the Cowboys good field position after the penalty at their own 46. And Emmett Smith will try the middle and gets about five. Marco Coleman and others make the tackle. And it's uh, time now to check our natural gas quarterback efficiency ratings as we move into the stretch run of this 19 93 NFL season and Steve Young oh, what a game on Monday night against the Saints moves into the lead with Aikman in second place Elway a bear Asiason Marino although out for the year still enough throws to qualify Kozar the backup to Aikman is ninth and there's Bernie boy is he happy to be down in Dallas uh, quite a year of tumult for him Smith picking his way, shy of the first down at the 45 of Miami. John Offerdahl and Dwight Hollier, Miami linebackers with a tackle. And Offerdahl so happy to be back. Uh, out. He said, you know, the first five years I did some nice things, got to a pro bowl and all, but our team wasn't very good. Yeah, he, he said, I had to make all the plays. Now I don't have to make the great plays. I'd love to be a part of this, and I can't stay healthy. Coming off a shoulder injury, last week played 20 or 30 snaps. This guy is one of Steve Smith's rock hits. That is the hardest, one of the hardest guys in the NFL to hit when you block. Steve Smith, the blocking back for the Raiders. Third and two, and it's Smith. And he slips and uh, stays on his feet and appears on that second effort to be close to the first down. Haldier, the second-year backer from Carolina, in on the tackle again. Emmett now six carries, 17 yards. And it appears it'll require a measurement as uh, Ed Hockley, the referee, looks to the sidelines. 
Now the deception continues. We still don't know how good or how bad Emmett Smith is. I mean, if we can't make a determination yet because this looks a lot like Emmett Smith. He'll run four, five, six times nothing. And the next one, he also might bop, pop one out for 25 or 30 yards. He says, you won't see any 60 yarders from me, but I think I can give you the 10, 15. Yeah. Yeah. And he gave Dallas a first down at the Miami 44. The Dolphins leading 7-0 on a startling 77-yard touchdown run by Keith Byers. So from the 44-yard line, Miami territory, Troy Aikman with a new set of downs. You're doing a good job on that yard marker, so how do you know that? I'm sitting right next to you, and I don't know where it is. You're right. I'm telling you, you're right. But I don't know how you're doing it. I guess after almost 30 years of covering this <laughs> National Football League, you know the 100 yards. Yep. Daryl Johnston in front of Emmett Smith on first down. Aikman pumping and going long, going to be intercepted, but there's a flag down. Lewis Oliver has the interception, but I believe we're going to have a hold against J.B. Brown as he was uh, grabbing Michael Irvin. Yeah, it was the hitch and go by Irvin. J.B. Brown fought and had to just stop Irvin, and it's, frankly, it's a good penalty. If, if he doesn't stop him, Aikman's going to hit him right square in the numbers, and he's going to run it in. The five-yard penalty, not interference, five-yard first down. Watch the hitch. The fake right there, J.B. Brown bites. Uh, actually, uh, that's very smart on J.B. Brown's part. It was unlikely, Bob Trumpy, that uh, Urban on this field would have gotten to that ball. I think Oliver, had he not been held up, might have had the interception, and that's why Oliver was so upset that he lost the interception. It's a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down at the 39 of Miami. And there's the emotional part of the Miami Dolphins. Now, you just saw Brian Cox. This Miami Dolphin football team is so much more physical than it has been in the last 10 or 12 years, in part because of Brian Cox on the defense, a lot bigger defensive lineman. Uh, it used to be a finesse football team. It's not anymore. First down, Aikman. Dumps it off to Smith. And Smith showing good speed as he slides out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Brown and Vincent, two cornerbacks over there to get Smith. Dick, I was struck yesterday when we were at the Dallas's practices. You'll watch this play come right at you. And when Emmett Smith went out to run, he came out in full pads, the new thigh boards he's wearing today to protect his thigh. He was jogging on the, uh, an adjacent field to where the team was practicing. When he started jogging, the entire team stopped, turned around, <laughs> looked at Emmett. You know, they all made their own judgment as to what he looked like, but to this point, he's carrying the load. He's the kingpin in this Dallas offensive machinery. name as he plunges to about a yard from a first down. Jeff Cross and others with a stop at the 30. Shula likes this kid. He, he likes all those guys who get dirty. You know, they, they very seldom get headlines. We don't talk about them a lot. But he loves guys like Daryl Johnson. Had Tony Page fill the same role. But he, he likes Johnson's uh, versatility. Yes. That he blocks, he catches, he runs. He just does everything so well. Scott Galbraith and Jay Novacek, two tight ends now on third and one. And Aikman going to throw for him. Intercepted by Cox. Brian Cox with Aikman to beat. And he's caught from behind by Galbraith at the Dallas 42-yard line. What an interception by Brian Cox. What bad weather. This is a sprint out by Dallas. It's coming right at you. The intended receiver is Harper, 80. Brian Cox plays it beautifully. Makes an excellent reception. Ball to Miami. Only third interception thrown by Dallas all year. <laughs> That's what they do on Thanksgiving when you get an interception his first of the year. 
Irvin is going to run a pick. Here's the primary receiver, and here's Brian Cox. He plays this picture perfect for the interception. And it gives us Miami the third trip into Dallas territory. They missed the field goal, got the touchdown, and now first down from the 42. DeBerg looking long for Fryer. Oh, very close to another six. He still has the arm at 39, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, he said, too, that if there's one person he can thank for teaching him football is Roger Staubach. Now, in 1977, he comes out of San Jose State, and he's here from, from May through to September, and Roger Staubach loved his arm. He's always been able to throw the football. He said, I came out of San Jose State, San Jose State. All I could do was throw it. Roger taught me a lot about football, and he said, I'm forever thankful. And Roger Staubach, one of the guests on NFL Live earlier today. Looks great. Looks like he could uh, still get out there and lead this Dallas team. Terry Kirby runs into a stack of Cowboys after a pickup of three. He's inside the 40-yard line. It would appear that in terms of field goals today, anything longer than uh, outside the 20 is going to be hazardous. That you can punch the ball, but you really can't deliver that, that hard charge, the kicker at the ball. Yeah, I think the first time that Stojanovic uh, tried, he didn't clear an area big enough, as you said, Dick. Two, it might make Don Shula say, look, uh, as opposed to a field goal here, let's pin him back to the goal line. Because again, this is still a field position football game. Shotgun to Berg. He likes the shotgun. He told us that yesterday. Throws underneath. Kirby can't get away. And no first down. And now the fumble. Is it ruled a fumble? They scramble. And it's called a fumble. Dallas ball. Kirby, understandably, the rookie trying to get the first down. And the second effort led to Dallas's chance to knock it away. And Dick, you didn't see Don Shula complain too much. The hit by Brock Marion, and the ball does come loose. That's a good call. I don't think that his, his forward momentum was stopped. And now it's two turnovers, one for each team. Dallas gets it back. James Washington, number 37, recovered for Dallas. Well, again, a small bit to apply to the rest of this game. Don't fight for inches. Just hang on to the football, get to the ground. Dallas starts from the 32. And it's Emma. Drawing a lot of aquamarine uniforms after a couple yards. And notice Chuck Klingbeil on the tackle. You would expect him to be good today. <laughs> He's from, from Houghton, Michigan. Yes. He said that they've been snow up there at home for a long time already. Right. This is just a little, little drizzle for him. And his uh, athletic career started as an ice skater. So, I mean, a he, is, he is right at home here. Big Montreal Canadian fan. His uh, heroes were Cornwallie and Dryden and Mahabalich, not football players. Aikman to Johnston, and Moose is close to a first down at the 42. Dwight Hollier, Troy Vincent with a stop. Johnston, who played at Syracuse. Dick, uh, Miami's taking a chance here with the bad footing. What they're going to try to do is keep rolling these corners up, safeties out, make it difficult for these big receivers on the outside to get the ball. But Aikman hits the outlet receiver here beautifully, and that's the one thing that can work and work all day long. You see how your 50 has to come from the inside to assist on the tackle with Vincent. Out of the eye on third and one, Johnston and Emmett. It's Smith sliding to a first down just shy of the 45-yard line. We have just over two minutes left in the first quarter here. Irving, Texas. It has been icy and sleeting since noon today, a winter storm that uh, has sent out hazardous forecasts throughout this part of Texas. Players slipping and sliding on this Thanksgiving day, with one exception, Keith Byers, who rumbled 77 yards for a Miami touchdown and a 7-0 lead. Two minutes to go in the quarter as they will measure. It appears he has... Uh, Plenty for the first time, but with all the yard markers obliterated, uh, one best not guess, huh? Maybe they ought to ask you. <laughs> You've been darn good at it. I say first down by plenty. You're right again. You know, if you just tune in, the tarp was on this field until an hour and a half before the game started. So this is accumulated in just about 
uh, two hours and 15 minutes. And as you can see, not a heavy snow. This is an ice storm. Emmett Smith now eight carries for 21 yards, 2.6 average, but it's just absolutely remarkable that this man, after what happened on Sunday and the pain of that injury, is still going. Play action, Aikman for Urban. Michael Urban. First down in Miami territory at the 45. J.B. Brown made the stop. Told us yesterday he's a yards guy. Not interested in a lot of catches, but wants those deep receptions. Jimmy Johnson said, this is the hardest working athlete I have ever been around in my life. I've been around him for 10 years, and every year he's gotten better. This is one of the most proud individuals you will ever meet in a football uniform. And you met Michael Irvin and his uh, big and happy family on our NFL Live pregame show, and uh, we had a couple of added uh, comments from Irvin himself. He's a terrific character. Down the middle, incomplete. Off Irvin's fingertips at the 25 and almost into the arms of the Miami Dolphins' Louis Oliver. And one of the things that Michael said to us that I love was in a family of 17, we, we asked him what dinner was like around there, and he said, well, first off, dad ate first. His and plate then, was filled first by absolutely. mom. Absolutely. And then the rest of us kind of filled in. He's afraid to cover. He won't cover. He won't even come here. Brian Aikman, whether well, certainly bothering or not bothering his throwing arm, he's uh, throwing ropes out there. Five for ten to Johnston. And his feet cut out by Jarvis Williams, who played uh, at Florida with Emmett Smith. Yeah, they had a big hello, and how are you before the ball game? Uh, again, excellent coverage by Miami. You got to give the Dallas Cowboys those little swing passes, those little flare passes by the running backs underneath because they have such gifted wideouts. Harper and Irvin, you, you need support for the other people out there trying to uh, cover them as best you can. And the, the fullback and the running back's going to be open all day long. It's more like third and six here as uh, Shula sends in three more defensive backs. And it's Irvin underneath for a first down. No second. Yes, it is Michael Irvin. Troy Vincent makes the tackle. This is a big receiver. Michael Irvin is a big, strong receiver. And Troy Vincent is a big cornerback, but you see just a little bit of distance between the cornerback and Michael Irvin. And Irvin is, see the hands there? He, he absorbs that hit and finds himself open, and Aikman makes the completion. Irvin adding yards to his lead in the NFL over Jerry Rice, end of the quarter. Hello, I'm Nate Newton of Dallas Cowboys, and I'd wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And if you ain't going to eat turkey, eat french fries, because I love them. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and that is, that's just not Thanksgiving. French fries anytime. He's the expert on French fries. He puts chili on them, he says, ketchup, it, all kinds of combinations. 325 pound Nate Newton, he once was over 400. Yeah, he calls French fries the universal food. And when we, when we talk to him about Thanksgiving, he said, man, when I grew up, we called it grubbing, and I said, what do you mean? He said, we went from house to house on Thanksgiving. It wasn't one table, it was five different houses we had Thanksgiving. Well, he's ready to go right after the game today. First down, Dallas, trailing 7 nothing as we open the second quarter. Aikman, well protected, and dumps it off to Smith, and Smith hit immediately no game. Nate Newton called Thanksgiving dinner the Newton's uh, pregame meal for Christmas. <laughs> he's a delightful. The oh, kitchen, what a nickname. The kitchen, yeah. Nate Newton. Uh, he's been all over that offensive line. At one time was an offensive tackle, now a guard. Uh, he carries uh, some ballast around him, but he's one of the strongest guys up front you're ever going to find. Well, that's just a 100-pound hedge against anorexia. That's what he says. <laughs> Second and 11. Johnson. And Johnson met by Jarvis Williams, and Williams, a safety man, comes up to make the stop at uh, the line of scrimmage. So they're trying to go to the bigger backs on this uh, slick footing, but not much there. But, Dick, the only problem is that what they're doing is they're getting Johnson going sideline to sideline, as you see the uh, 
This is live, but while they're yeah. playing at one end, he's trying to clear the yard stripes as the other. Yeah. What Dallas has to do is Johnson is open, but they got to run the flare route where he's going up the field. Everything he's catching, Dickey's going to the sideline. Even a little man then hitting you can get you off the field. Neutralize all the sides you have. Third down, close to the 12. Aikman looking for something big. Goes for Irvin. Knocked away at the last minute by Troy Vincent. Vincent appeared to be beaten, but on the icy conditions, you could see Irvin trying to gather his feet underneath him, and that allowed Vincent to duck in with the right hand. This is very close, and Vincent does get that hand just in there to knock it away. You can see Michael Irvin's hands there ready to receive the football. Excellent job. Contact again at the break. Hand up to the face mask just to give Vincent a little help. Vincent has learned quickly how to play this spot in the NFL. So on fourth down in a dozen, Cowboys noting Stojanovic's problems with a field goal try from about this area. Go for it. No punt. Aikman down the middle. Oh, incomplete as Irvin was triple teamed and Troy Vincent and Lewis Oliver hit him simultaneously. Miami takes over on down. Now, Dick, I think Jimmy Johnson learned something from Miami with their field goal attempt. He says, hey, I'm not going to try a field goal here. Let's go with the, uh, the best thing we can do here. Watch this hit by Oliver, who when drafted said, I'm not here to cover anybody. I'm here to loosen fillings. The Bills and the Chiefs, that'll be uh, the headline game on Sunday. You'll see it here on NBC, and you can bet the Chiefs are here as, uh, watching today as Miami takes on... Uh, the Dallas Cowboys and any victory by those teams up in the higher echelon, the others rooting against them. Home field obviously so important heading toward the playoffs. Well, it appears pass is the call today on this field. And it's worked. I mean, uh, even though Lewis Oliver knocked away that fourth down uh, attempt there by Troy Aikman, there are receivers open. One of the things that has, happens here is the linebackers can't get back underneath coverage. So. Second down and eight at about the 34 of Miami. DeBerg and Cookie incomplete off the fingertips of Mark Ingram. Larry Brown there to cover. NFL live on Sunday to kick off a good lineup of action that'll uh, be culminated by that Kansas City Buffalo game. And you'll take a look at that Buffalo Bills defense as, that has helped carry. Uh, Marv Levy's club to three consecutive Super Bowls. Cornelius Bennett, Bruce Smith, Jets, New England, Raiders, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Atlanta, early Buffalo, Kansas City, Denver, Seattle, the late game. The Berg is five for nine, third down, eight. Down the middle, Ingram. Still on his feet and out to foot race. Ingram caught from behind at the 30-yard line by Darren Woodson. 36-yard play, and Ingram continues to come up with the big yardage catches for Miami. Dick Dallas had their 47 defense in, seven defensive backs. You see Bill Bates, number 40, threatening the blitz. Watch the zip the bird puts on it, and then Everett and Brown missed the tackle. Washington has to finally run him down. These are big Miami receivers, just like Dallas's receivers, and a huge pickup for Miami. Officially 35 yards. 12 minutes left in the first half, 7-0. Dolphins and Byers' second carry after that 77-yard touchdown run in the opening quarter gets uh, about two yards this time. Oh, you, you got to think that a guy like Steve DeBerg on a field like this and the years of experience pays such a huge dividend. I mean, they cut the offense down for DeBerg, but he cuts it down even more. He knows how to play this stuff because of all the years he's been in the league. And though with warm weather teams, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, now Miami. 17, his number, 17 years in the league for DeBerg. Good play action pace. Throw down the middle, incomplete Keith Jackson was the target. Oh, Charles Haley putting the punch on DeBerg. He was held by Norton, too. Keith Jackson was. Jackson was running the uh, crossing pattern. He's still complaining. Ken Norton got a hold of him as he's uh, running the 
the crossing pattern and he was the intended receiver top of the screen he gets the release now watch Norton on him and he got a hold of his shirt there in the back got away with it from the Dallas 28 yard line it's third down a long seven Bill Bates extra defensive back in the bird underneath intercepted by Bates right into Bates's arms and the veteran from Tennessee gets Dallas the ball didn't even turn around. Watch what happens. He's the intended receiver. He never even looks back to the bar. He's just walking through the line of scrimmage, hits off his helmet, and Bill Bates comes up with the interception. The 13th of his career, a man who was out all last year with a severe knee injury. Ice on the cranberries in Dallas today. <laughs> Good news is it's a lighter sleet at the moment. And Dallas takes over at the 26 on the interception by Bates. And Emmett Smith breaking tackles, but a flag is down as he's out close to the 35-yard line. Lewis Oliver the stop. Back to DeBerg after the interception to the sidelines. He's uh, yelling at Terry Kirby. Of course, DeBerg is the new kid on the block. And at the end of this walk, Look who comes up to him. He's not happy. But out of the way, well, Marino says, wait, 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 now cool down. Now, <laughs> did you ever think you'd see Dan Marino trying to cool somebody down? And DeBerg at 39 showing his uh, leadership. Didn't want uh, that to go. Now, of course, uh, all smiles. Yes. He's, uh, he said, how could you be not be happy? The one moment you think your football career is over, the next moment you're playing for a team that's talking about going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And look at Marino in there. Penalty was against Dallas, illegal motion, nullifying a good run by Smith, and it takes it back to the 22-yard line. Aikman looking for Irvin. He's down underneath. He goes to the tight end, Novacek. And Novacek, short game, nailed at the 25 by Brian Cox. Novacek, who has more catches in the 90s than any NFL tight end. That was his 219th. This guy uh, comes out of Wyoming as a cowboy, is acquired from Phoenix and is now a cowboy, and is a real-life cowboy. He trains and rides cutting horses. Uh, he he thinks the only thing you can ride has nothing in the back but straw in it. I mean, it's <laughs> a pickup truck for life for Jake Novacek. Pride and joy of Gothenburg, Nebraska, where he owns a big spread. That's Novacek in motion on second and 12. To Smith in the play. And he's out of bounds into the arms of the Dolphins on the near sidelines at about the 28-yard line. Be about third and uh, eight. Dick, uh, to this point, to this point, uh, Troy Aikman has been very smart. He's had some opportunities to run here and has stayed in the pocket and found the outlet receiver. Now, that's not something that Troy Aikman has ever been very good at. When the first guy's not there, he likes to run out of that pocket, and he's protecting that hamstring on a, and doing a great job of it to this point. Harper to the right. Kevin Williams is now slotted left inside uh, Michael Irvin. And they're going to need wide open at Smith. And Smith has the first down. Green gets him out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 12 yards on the pass play. So valuable. So valuable. I mean, I, I think his greatest attribute after his heart is that the ability he shows at the end of this play. Just with the slightest little move makes a guy miss. Very seldom do you see Emmett Smith really hammered when he carries the ball or catches it. Just under 10 minutes to go before the intermission. The Dolphins lead 7-0 on a 77-yard rumble by Keith Byers. Smith chopped down as uh, he gets to the 39-yard line, make that the 44-yard line as we try to sort out uh, the yard stripes. Jeff Cross uh, with the tackle, and John Offerdahl just plagued by injuries. Now uh, putting some heat on that left hamstring. Yeah, and that's high. You don't like to see that, of course, coming back after that uh, shoulder injury. He's been out for quite a while. John wants to be out there every snap, but he just can't stay healthy. 93 veteran Cliff Odom in Texas Arlington replaces him. 
The toss is to the rookie, Coleman Lincoln, and the big guy is to near midfield. No fumble. Lincoln Coleman is a 250-pounder from Baylor, and if you want a Thanksgiving story, you're looking at it. Number 44. This summer, he was playing arena football for the Dallas Texans at 500 a game. A year ago, he was a dock worker at Home Depot for 650 an hour. Now he's making 100,000, and that is his first NFL carry. They also played for the Dallas Colts, a semi-pro team, where he had to pay $5 to get in to play. He's in there and gets it again. A toss to Coleman. They're using his 250 pounds and using it well. Lincoln Coleman, a first down in Miami territory at about the 35-yard line. Troy Benson got him down. His dad is a freshman for the Dallas Morning News. Been there for years and years and years. And I imagine he's waited for a long time to print his son's name in the paper. And he gets his first two NFL carries as we've got a Miami Dolphin down on the sideline. Can't pick up who it is. Yeah, we'll wait. Uh, might be Jarvis Williams. We see the two. And it uh, does appear to be Williams 26. So there'll be a timeout as they attend to the safety man starting safety for the Dolphins. 7 nothing, Miami second quarter. Word from the sidelines not a serious entry to Jarvis Williams. He should return first down at the 36 Dallas curling 7 nothing. Second quarter here at Nervin and there goes the big guy Lincoln Coleman again. Lincoln Coleman, he said when he was one year old, his grandfather gave him a Dallas Cowboy helmet. He said maybe that was destiny. You talk about a dream coming through from semi-pro to arena ball to the NFL for a guy who didn't finish his work at Baylor. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't wipe the smile off this kid's face with a ball-peen hammer. <laughs> Ever since he walked into that Dallas Cowboys training camp, started running over people, he knew he was home. Almost 10 yards on that carry, and he has 29 yards. That's more than Emmett Smith, who has 24 and 9 carries. He's wearing a very famous number here, 44. Robert Newhouse, the big fullback back in the 70s when Roger Staubach was the quarterback. He knew that. He said he's met Robert Newhouse, and uh, Robert said, you take good care of that twin fours. A little short of the first down. So second uh, down and uh, short, uh, down with which to play. And Jimmy Johnson has shown that he's uh, not averse to uh, a little trickery. Yeah, and he's also already established to us that he's not going to try field goals of this length. I mean, I don't know at what point he'll try one here, but trailing seven to nothing, you think he's almost in four down area. 7.54 remaining in this first half. If you're just joining us, uh, then tied up with the... Uh, Feast on this Thanksgiving holiday earlier. Dave Wanstead's Chicago Bears. Dave Wanstead, the former defensive coordinator for Jimmy Johnson's Super Bowl team, defeating the Lions 10 to 6 at Pontiac. Second and in inches. And look at him rumble. Lincoln Coleman all the way to the 20 yard line. And he's not just gaining yards, he's gaining 8 to 10 a crack. And a lot of respect. I think he also realizes, watch how he protects the football here. Both hands on it. Jimmy Johnson knows that, or he knows that if he coughs it up, he's going to be out of the game. Here's a guy who, when he played in the Arena League, bounced off. He bounced off all kinds of walls and caught the ball out of the net and all kinds of stuff like this. This is easy. Averaging nine a carry in his four tries. From the 20. Now Aikman. Guns the ball to Irving. First down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal at the 9. Troy Vincent on the coverage. Hey, Lincoln Coleman has changed the coverage of the Miami Dolphins here. Linebackers, watch how they hold at the line of scrimmage. 51-93. Bam. Nice lane for Troy Aikman to throw to Irvin on the outside. Coleman has had a very big effect. Again, the outside release by Irvin. Squares himself over his feet. That's not bad coverage at all from Troy Vincent. So the four consecutive runs by the rookie Lincoln Coleman 
And then the pass to Irvin from the nine, first and goal. Dallas trying to tie it. Coleman tripped up as he gets to the seven-yard line. Becker was the trainer of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And that, that saw him first, right. he was just taking a day off and watching an arena ball. Yeah, Kevin O'Neill was sitting in his house and he had the TV on and they were running this, what is this stuff, arena football? And Coleman was not only playing fullback, but you had to be, play both ways. So he was also a linebacker. And he uh, talked to one of the coaches, and said, just look at this kid, will you? Well, he's, he's close to 250, which made him one of the biggest guys on the field. He got his opportunity and has made the best of it. He matriculated at Notre Dame, didn't work there, went to Baylor and played just sparingly. He didn't finish his senior year. From the six-yard line, he powers to the four. And it's taken a game to bring him down. It'll be third and goal from the four. Chuck Klingbeil on the nose, number 99, the first man to hit him. Now, I don't think you're going to see a lot of moves and finesse from Lincoln Coleman. He told us, uh, I'm a smash-mouth kind of runner as he leaves, and a guy half his number comes in. 44 leaves, 22 comes in. Now the Cowboy fans have a new hero in Lincoln Coleman. They bring in an extra wide receiver, Kevin Williams, with Emmett Smith. Third and goal. And Aikman will spend a timeout. 5.24 left in the half. Four yards from a tie, the Dallas Cowboys. Hi, I'm Chuck Klingbaugh of Miami Dolphins. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody up in the UP. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Houghton, and uh, he told us when he was a freshman in high school, he saw his first Thanksgiving Day game in person at Pontiac, saw the Lions as Uncle Al took him down there. So he now playing in his first Thanksgiving Day game, has Uncle Al here, flew him in to watch him play. Third and goal at the four. Aikman, lots of time. automatic about the extra point as veteran Eddie Murray comes in to kick. Novacek holds and the game is even. You can see Aikman hesitate here to throw it. He's waiting for the hand checking to get done. Throws it underneath the arm of a Miami Dolphin and Kevin Williams makes the catch low. J.B. Brown was the man in coverage and watch what happens here. It looks like Williams doesn't mind the contact, then slips in, pulls away. Aikman does a great job of hanging on to that thing and then makes the completion. Emmett Smith, a surprise starter for the Cowboys, considering the seriousness of his injury there to help applaud the rookie Kevin Williams. Some thought too small at 5'9", second round pick. Jimmy Johnson remembers him well. He recruited him. His second catch to go with second two runs for touchdowns. So he's produced four scores. Speaking of four scores, it wasn't Lincoln that got him there. <laughs> oh, oh, I knew you'd figure something out before this half was over. It's just an accident. 7-7. He says, uh, look at there. Did you see me standing next to Emmett on Thanksgiving Day? Look at this. <laughs> he, was, he, he got yeah. in the game last week, and he said no one knew it. I came in, and I actually was in my first NFL game, and he said, must have been in commercial. Because <laughs> none of my family saw me. He's telling all of them. He'll go home and tell all the boys in the hood, and I say, yeah, yeah. Emmett and me are tight. We're buddies. We stand on the sideline together all the time. So it's a new game with 5-19 left in the half. O.J. McDuffie. And Mike Williams stand at the 10-yard line as Eddie Murray tries to kick some of the ice out of his plates. And here we go. Murray, a former Lion, used to working on Thanksgiving. Hits a one-hopper to Greg Beatty, the tight end. And Beatty out of bounds at about the 35-yard uh, line. James Washington with a tackle. So now, Sunday, talk about nostalgia. How about Bonanza Night on NBC? 
remember that theme? Relive the highlights of 14 years of Bonanza. See the stars that were on the show. If you love Bonanza, this is the one-hour special you won't want to miss. And after an all-new sequest, it's an all-new Bonanza movie. More than 20 years later, the legend lives again. Michael Landon, Jr., Dirk Walker, star in Bonanza The Return, Sunday on NBC. Yes, sir, the Cowboys. It is the 37-yard line as the bird goes to work and hands off to Higgs. And Higgs gets about two, maybe three. Dixon Edwards from Michigan State and big cat Leon left from Emporia State of Kansas on the tackle. And probably a good idea for Dallas, both these teams actually, to get the biggest defensive lineman they can up there in front with uh, the bad footing here. Leon Lett's a hard guy to shove around. Easy to catch, though. Leon Lett, that's right. <laughs> For the rest of his life, his name and that of Don Beebe will be permanently linked. Caught in the Super Bowl. The bird on second and seven. Goes to a tight end, Jackson, right at the six. Close to a first down. They're in Woodson. Ken Norton with the stop. Well, you know, the, the Cowboys keep allowing Jackson off the line of scrimmage. Top of the screen. Oh, look, that's like a three-yard pattern. Norton comes from the outside. I think that the Dolphins can do that all day, and uh, the Cowboys have done it with Daryl Johnston. So these are going to be very active receivers. But my suggestion is hold that tight end up a little bit. You're not going to pressure the quarterback that much today. They are going to be just shy of the first down, third and inches. You want to talk about a tough guy. How about Ken Norton? We all know his dad, the former heavyweight champion, tough man. Ken Norton is playing the rest of the year with a bicep muscle, the tendon that attaches near the elbow, totally severed. So he has a special device on his arm so he can't lift his arm. It requires surgery, he said, I'll have it after the year. Uh, he's also playing a new spot. Last year he was an outside linebacker. This year he's an inside linebacker and doesn't complain a bit. And what a hit he made in the Super Bowl. That was the knockout punch yep. on the goal line. Dennis Davis. At the 47-yard line. It's hit. Hit in the backfield by Leon Lett. Dickey's sitting just off the shoulder of the center. You're going to see it happen. Dellenbach is the center, and Leon Lett, a big, strong guy. Dellenbach can't even slow him down. Dale Hatcher, the veteran from Clemson, will punt for the first time in this half. Kevin Williams, who just scored the touchdown inside the Dallas 20. Good snap. Hatcher, short kick. Williams, fair catch of that twister at the 22-yard line. A 33-yard punt. Well, Leon Ladd and the defense doing their job, stopping Miami on third and inches. And now an illegal procedure call against Miami, but a short kick, you would uh, guess Dallas will uh, take it right where it is. Yeah, I think also when you can catch it cleanly. Illegal formation by the kicking team. The right side of the line was too far off the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. First down. NFL live with us uh, live here at halftime. And the Domino Pizza halftime report will feature the smiling owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Not smiling so much in that commercial that uh, debuts on our Thanksgiving Day telecast. And there they are getting ready for work. Hello, Mike Ditka. I want you to meet Bob Trumpy someday. You're over in the other side of the stadium. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you two guys together yet. Please. I've been a big fan of you. My entire life, raised in Illinois, watched Dipka play tight end for the Chicago Bears in Wrigley Field. It would be my lifelong dream come true. From the 23, play action Aikman. Having to run something they don't want him to do, and he slides down immediately. That's instinct taking over. Yeah, that was to be handed off to Emmett Smith. He could not get the ball to him, and he keeps it. Emmett fell down. down. He wasn't there. Yeah, watch Emmett Smith when Aikman goes to hand him this ball. Emmett has bent over from slipping, and to watch how little Aikman can run. So he he's done a great job to stay in this game and throw the ball as well as he has until now. And when Emmett Smith, Smith 
slips in. It's out to Lutz. Very smart by Aikman. And he uh, gained a couple of yards. So it'll be second and a long eight. Aikman has thrown the ball 21 times. 14 reception. Johnson to midfield out of bounds at the 45 Dallas 45 Jarvis Williams Cliff Odom with the tackle a 20 yard play well it's been open all day you're going to see these two lock up he comes out here when Johnston comes out of the backfield if he misses if he just gets away from one tackler that's all it takes the cornerback rotates up and again it's the same coverage and it's the same pattern that Johnston catches out in the flat. This time he runs right by the corner for a big game. 7-7 seven, seven tie, 2.15 left in the half. Emmett. Look at the power of Emmett Smith. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage and gains five yards before Chuck Klingbeil can wrap his 295 pounds around him. And we're at the two-minute timeout. The Dolphins and the Cowboys even at seven. Michael Irvin, one of 17 for Lauderdale, Florida. He said that 30 some odd uh, people, uh, his people, he said here, came over in vans, four yep. or five vans, took them out to a fancy restaurant in Dallas, fed them all the biggest lobster they could find. And when the check came, $2,000. And he was reaching in, looking for help. And he looked all around the table, his relatives, and what did he get? <laughs> <laughs> Great lobster, Michael. No, <laughs> Nobody no. paid a dime but Michael. Urban tells it much better. Yes, he does. Be sure. That his family drove 25 hours to be here for this Thanksgiving Day game. Urban, who has 60 catches for the season to lead the Cowboys. Second down and five. Aikman skips to a stop and then throws long. Has a man, but it's almost intercepted by Lewis Oliver. Michael Urban was the intended receiver. Well, again, they're able to get their receivers down the field outside this zone coverage of Miami. And Oliver there, actually, he should have made the interception. J.B. Brown, let's look at, the, look at the job that Urban did as he went by, knocked the arm of the defender away. Oliver playing that double zone there to knock it away for, he should have had an interception. That would have been a big play for him. So it's third and five for Dallas. They're six for ten today. And it's Smith inside. Runs into his own man. Ran right into the back of Mark Stepnowski, the center, and John Giesick, the right guard. And then Dwight Hollier finished him off. So no gain. Fourth and five. And the punting team on for Dallas. 141 to go. And uh, does Miami call time? Yes. I, I would think that Miami might go after this punt, Dick. We'll see when we return. Those eyes bigger and brighter into the holiday season and heard my first Christmas carol today in the hotel and, and these youngsters all thinking about that Thanksgiving dinner and a uh, month ahead to the next holiday. Not just those youngsters, Mr. Inburton. That's right. And Dallas uh, and their fans looking beyond the uh, next month to late January and as it is with Miami. John Jett to punt. Deep as O.J. McDuffie turned one for a touchdown this year. At the 20. And down at the 23-yard line. Bill Bates was the first downfield along with Derek Gaynor. In the American Football Conference, uh, take a look at some of the key standings. In the East, Miami and Buffalo share the best records in the NFL, and the Jets coming strong, two back. The AFC Western Division, Kansas City atop, with Denver and the Raiders a length behind. And it'll be those two leaders, Kansas City and the Buffalo, battling at Arrowhead on Sunday, the late game at 4 o'clock. It all begins NFL Live at 1230. DeBerg with 1.32 remaining in the half and two timeouts. Gives to Higgs. And Higgs gets a couple. It's somewhat surprising in that Byers carries twice, one 77 yards for a touchdown that uh, Miami hasn't gone back to the big four. Yeah, they're, they're going to Higgs. They're, they're trying to spread the defense out, but I got to tell you, Dallas's front four doing an excellent job of, first of all, keeping their feet. 
they're standing all the offensive linemen up by the Miami Dolphins. The running backs have no options to run. Fire to the left, Ingram to the right. Kirby in the backfield on second and eight. Kirby. Leon left. From Fairhope, Alabama. Timeout called by Dallas. Sure. 49 seconds left in the half. You never know. In this weather, a fumble could occur on any play, and you got to play those percentages. And again, there's the field position you got to also consider. Here's Leon Lett. He gets inside 69 Sims, and by the time the ball is handed off, Leon again right there to stop Kirby. See, they're, they're keeping their feet, standing up those offensive linemen. Running backs have no options here, no place to turn. Leon Lett from Victoria State of Kansas, an NAIA player. He was picked in the seventh round a couple of years ago by Jimmy Johnson as a project and uh, developed into a starting player in a hurry. 6'6 and 292. Well, yesterday, Dodd Shula was saying they acquired the veteran Tom Thayer, released by the Chicago Bears, saying, you know, he's not a real big guy. He's around 280. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a really a big guy. That's how times have changed. Well, you play against Leon Lett. Yeah, it is. Only 6'3", 280. That's not big. Third down, seven. Seven defensive backs in the ball game now for Dallas. Terry Kirby runs into James Washington, number 37. Short of the first down, timeout. Dallas with 42 seconds. Dallas, That's their last timeout. Dick Dallas has played this series beautifully. I mean, they've conserved time. They're going to give their offense at least a chance and maybe even go after the punter. Kevin Williams, meanwhile, will drift back to return. Jimmy Johnson, we asked him about, as we did all the players, for their Thanksgiving memories, and Johnson stared at us with a blank look and said, memories? He said, that's really not my style. <laughs> and you have to admire him for admitting that. His memory is last week, yesterday, last hour. That's right. The Atlanta loss on Sunday in a short week and uh, trying to get his team back on the winning track. Dallas is setting up for a return here now. Need a good snap from Greg Beatty, 84, to the punter. Hatcher finds a clean piece of uh, carpet there where it's been, uh, the snow's been mowed away at the 15-yard line. And that's about where he'll deliver the ball, so trying to get a little extra footing there. His last kick was only 33 yards. This one not much better. Williams at the 40. 45. He's got to go all the way. Kevin Williams, touchdown. One of the top returners in college football last year at Miami. Kevin Williams, one of his many strengths, has his second touchdown today, 64 yards, and Dallas claims the lead. Well, Bob Trumpy, you predicted special teams would be key to victory today, and Dallas strikes on the punt return. Eddie Murray's try for point. 14 to 7 Dallas as they hit Tater with 27 seconds to go at the end of this first half. Dick, this is this will look beautiful from the end zone as you see Hatcher with the punt. When the receiver catches the ball, watch how careful he is when he hangs on to it. Kevin Williams hesitates almost for a second. I got the football. There's a little holding. Parmalee misses him. And now watch the sliding start. He's going one way. Everybody else is going the other. And then he ought to get six and a half for this just for the finish. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, he could play at Roland Garros on that clay. Red clay. Uh, the French Open with that kind of sliding move. The hesitation there froze the first man. And then Williams with great speed and with the bad footing. And I like this finish. 
but it's only available on tapes like this. <laughs> yeah, there is a limited value, but uh, that's what you call coming up with a new move <laughs> under the weather conditions. Now, Jimmy Johnson calling the timeouts, looking for something big, and he gets it from the little rookie Kevin Williams. Murray, the kickoff, a line drive in toward McDuffie. Handled by Williams. Gets up. 15. And down at the 17-yard line. 19 seconds to go. Jerry Jones already mic'd up and will get uh, his reaction. I'm sure Jerry's involved with a television committee and uh, that still isn't revolved, uh, resolved and we'll see how that stands. And another issue here in Dallas, fans wondering how about Troy Aikman's contract? And uh, there are other issues as well. So stay with us at halftime. We'll get it right from uh, the CEO head on. Or as he changed his stadium. Jerry Jones has put skyboxes all over the place. This is the lap of luxury. This is the biggest living room in the in the entire United States. You can watch a football game in absolute comfort here. No chances taken here by DeBerg. They'll just uh, kneel on the final play of this first half. So Miami jumps out to a 7 nothing lead on Byers. 77-yard run and a long drive by Dallas to tie. Williams scoring on the pass. And then Kevin Williams. Igniting this frozen crowd with a 64-yard punt return to give Dallas a 14-7 halftime lead. We'll be back after a message from the NFL and a word from your local station. Halftime at Texas Stadium in less than ideal conditions. Cowboys now leading the Dolphins 14-7 after the big last-minute touchdown. And we are joined now live in our booth by Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Jerry, welcome. Just when you think you've seen everything, you get a Thanksgiving day like this one in Texas Stadium. Well, it's great. Of course, it's unique. I don't know that it's ever happened here in Dallas, Texas, and Texas Stadium. I love that Heisman Trophy slide on the ice dome out here. So we're excited right now. We've you been look talking. Like you're breathing easier, I tell you. You weren't breathing so easy when you walked in here until we saw that punt return. When we were waiting on uh, right now, I was shaking. I said, Mike, did, does that happen to you a lot when these games mean as much? <laughs> yeah, Mike shakes a lot. He and I have been wondering all fall, as have millions, how and when you will settle your long term situation with Troy Aikman. What can you tell us about the situation with him? Well, the only thing factual is that Troy has a two year contract right now, this year and next. Uh, it's in the best interest of the Cowboys and Troy to renegotiate that contract. Uh, Troy will be the quarterback of the Cowboys for as long as he's in the NFL, in my opinion. And so we're going to get it done. It's important to get it done before January 1st for him and the Cowboys. There's no issue. Well, what about this kid, Lincoln Kennedy? Well, first of all, Big 44 weighs... Lincoln two, Coleman, Coleman, guys, Coleman. not Lincoln I'm Kennedy. Close. Yes, yes. First of all, he weighs 250 pounds, came in with about four days left in training camp, really does have unique skills for a 250-pounder. And I sat down with Mike. Mike gave me so much grief about not having Emmett Smith on this scene. And I said, Mike, do you realize he makes about 2% of what Emmett makes? And look at him run that ball. <laughs> I, I, I love it. That's your favorite player now because you only have to pay him 100000 I love it. Well, well Mike, wait. you always knew it was but a short step from arena football exactly. to the NFL, exactly. right? Well, Mike, you told me, and of course, we're not taking anything away from the great skills of Emmett Smith, but you said, we both know that it can be close, but when the players and the fans know it, that's real. <laughs> as far as Emmett and Colt. Dick Enberg speculated toward the end of the first half as to what might be the situation between NFL owners and television networks on a future contract. Well, of course, nothing is more important to the NFL than successful negotiations with the networks, and we know how important it is to keep the tradition of NBC, CBS, uh, their own track. I'm excited. Our game is so exciting, brings so much as programming, and we're all so proud to be a part of it. It's going to go good, we think. We know about NBC. Who are the other guys? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't know if you got a chance to see it with us, but during the pregame show, a commercial aired for an athletic shoe company featuring Jerry and his team. Let's briefly take a look at the conclusion. Where are you headed? Super Bowl. Get in. Hey, nice jacket. Thanks. Nice shoes. Hey, what's in that? Nah. Poking a little <laughs> fun at the boss, I'm, huh? I'm still puffed up. I wanted Jimmy's part. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> one all right. Super Bowl, you get it. You think so? Right. Well, one more. I'll stand out there on that dusty road all day long for a Super Bowl. You help make it happen for him, okay, Mike? When we return, we will hear from the always humorous Art Donovan, a member of the first NFL team to have played in Dallas. Back in 1952, they played on Thanksgiving Day against the Dallas Texans. Not the Dallas Texans, who later became the Kansas City Chiefs. No, this was the team that lasted one season, later became the Baltimore Colts. They won only one game, but they did have one fascinating character on the team, Art Donovan. It was just one big, uh, one big party after another. Uh, we, uh, the, the team folded, and we went on the headquarters of Hershey, Pennsylvania. And if you're ever in Hershey, Pennsylvania, in November, there's nothing to do but to eat chocolate in the daytime and, and drink a few beers at night. And uh, it, was, it was unbelievable. We used to practice volleyball, hitting the football over the goalpost. And that was it. We, did, we, uh, we practiced for half an hour. The coach would call us up and say, OK, men, we're looking too good. We're just liable to beat the Bears. Everybody in. And that was it. The morning, the afternoon of the game, we played the Bears in, uh, in Akron. You're talking about with the Dallas Texans. Our, our uh, head coach, Jimmy Fallon, he says, I'm going to dispense with the customary introductions, and we're going to go up in the stands and meet them individually. So we got out on the field, and about eight or nine guys jumped the fence and went up and shaking hands with the people. There were only 4,000. And uh, the people, they got a big kick out of it. It was a real close game, and I, as I can remember, right near the end, uh, we threw a pass, and the guy on the Bears, he knocked it down, but instead of knocking it down, he knocked it up in the air, our, our end, whoever he was, he's been long gone. He caught it, and there we won the ball game. And you thought we were world champs. I have to say that would that'd be the most memorable thing in the National Football League history, because how we beat him is beyond me. And I heard that afterwards, when the Bears left Akron by plane to go back to uh, Chicago, they had their Thanksgiving Day dinners given to them on a plane, and Hallis went down the, uh, the aisle on a plane kicking the dinners out of their lap. <laughs> it must have been beautiful going back to, to Chicago. George Hallis kicking Thanksgiving dinners into the airplane aisle. Is that the Papa Bear you knew? That's it. If that wasn't turkey on those plates, it was probably groundhog. <laughs> <laughs> or crow. Let's get team reports now as the Cowboys hey, lead 14-7, starting with O.J. and the Dolphins. Juice. Well, I talked to the Dolphins as they came out of the locker room. They said the big word is the tackle, that when the Cowboys brought in their big back, that they didn't make good tackles on them, so the coach was on their cases to make better tackles. As my family throws snowballs at me. Incidentally, uh, Arpadal is hurt. I don't think he'll be playing in the second half. He has a bad hamstring. Will, what's happening with the Cowboys? Well, Juice, when Jimmy Johnson came off the field, I talked to him, and he said he was going to uh, talk all during, throughout the halftime to his players about not giving up the big play. He said when Keith Baez had the long run for a touchdown in the first half, they're in a defense they seldom ever used, and they wouldn't use that the rest of the game. Let's go back up to Jim and Mike. All right, thanks very much, Juice and Will. That'll wrap things up on the Halftime Report. It's time for Mike and me to send it back to Dick Enberg and Bob Truppy for the second half. Enjoy it, and happy Thanksgiving again. Thank you, gentlemen, and both teams back on the field. Kevin Williams, one of the smallest men on the field, this icy stadium in Irving, Texas, with two touchdowns and a startling 64-yard touchdown on the punt return at the end of the half. And, Dick, don't I remember early in the season, he had trouble hanging on to punts, and Jimmy Johnson took him aside and said, son, here, we don't drop punts. Well, the key to that punt return was he, he looked that right. ball into his hands, he made the first defender miss, and then after that, the snow took over. And that was the biggest player of the half. And how about Lincoln Coleman? I mean, you couldn't write this. No, no one would believe it in Hollywood. This uh, big guy, 250 pounds, played very little college football, kind of uh, wandered around here in his native Dallas and worked odd jobs, played a little semi-pro ball. Look at him rumble. He's the man who set up the drive that tied the game for Dallas and actually outrushed uh, the star Emmett Smith the first day. Dallas kicks off, Miami gets it first, and this is O.J. McDuffie with some running room. 30, and still on his feet. And McDuffie, uh, who played in some ill weather in his days with the Penn State Nittany Lions all the way out to the 42-yard line, a 33-yard return. Scott Galbraith with the tackle as we look at the Coors Light halftime statistics. 
and almost two to one in possession time uh, for Dallas. But look at the yardage, 179, 178, what you don't see, 64 yards on the punt return. I think if there's a shocking number there, it's just three turnovers because one of those turnovers was Terry Kirby not even turning around and DeBerg hitting him in the back of the head. Bill Bates comes up with the interception. So that's a pretty clean half under these conditions. Mark Higgs gets the toss. And he's wrapped up at the 45-yard line. Charles Haley stood him up. Well, after other than the Byers 77-yard TD run, Miami has now 11 carries, 22 yards. And this one right at Haley, you see Richmond Webb on him. And when Higgs bounces back inside, Haley there to make the tackle. Dick, this, this game remains a field position game. Both coaches have to think about protecting the football getting their defense as much yardage behind them as they possibly can in the second half. And plenty at stake. Each team atop their respective division in the NFL. DeBerg slipping as he sets up, then lines one deep and caught by Mark Ingram. Under these conditions, a stunning catch, 39 yards. Dick, what a throw by Steve DeBerg. Outstanding throw. Ingram and Fryer have made huge plays. Again, the play action fake to Higgs, but Steve DeBerg puts this beautifully over the outstretched hands of 28 Woods, and Ingram grabs it. You see the coverage running with him. Now, you can't throw it any better. I don't care what the conditions are. Ingram with two catches today, 85 yards now. He's had two big catches. Up by Tony Casillas and Ken Norton. Higgs is an interesting story, too. He was here in Dallas, roomed with Michael Irvin when they both came in as rookies. Said that he was uh, the backup to Herschel Walker when Herschel Walker was here. And he said Herschel never le left the field, would not leave the field no matter what happened. And he goes to Philadelphia. Herschel shows up there. He goes to Miami. And now he's carrying the big load. Rushing 600 yards on the season as the top rusher for the Dolphins. The ball inside the 15. DeBerg throws it away. Byers into the near flat. And by the way, Keith Byers has not caught a pass yet. And Byers has a 97-game streak of catching at least one ball. Watch Keith Jackson again. A free release off the line of screen. Well, Haley holds him up a little bit, but he opens up. Norton lets him go. Jackson's like, oh, man, come on. You don't get many opportunities. I'm 6'4", 235. You ought to be able to see me down here. Jackson to the right side. Outside of him is McDuffie with Ingram and Fryer to the left. Shotgun on third and long. Underneath to Kirby. Kirby, good move, and he's down to the five-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Terry Kirby rattled on a tackle by James Washington. Well, this time he looks around at the quarterback. Uh, Dallas again with the four-man front, seven defensive backs, and Kirby runs a little circle route. There you see all the defensive backs. They're all over the place. Puts his head down, hangs onto the football. First and goal Miami, it looks like to me, Dick. At the five-yard line. Trailing 14 to 7. A very important drive for Don Shula's team to come out of that locker room and try to strike, get back into the game. They've run on eight straight first downs, have the Dolphins. And they figure through here on first and goal. It's Byers. And they finally get him going sideways, and that's where his momentum ends after a two-yard game. Casillas was there first. Interesting formation there. They, they had Higgs blocking for Keith Byers. 21 in front of 41. Very unusual. Higgy, when he lines up behind Keith Byers, he's a short little guy. And Byers is so tall, he's got to kind of offset a little bit to see the line of scrimmage and also the, the snap when they're in the eye formation. This time they're what we used to call opposite. Ingram left and Fryer right. to run wide on this field. And the good yardage is being made straight ahead. So well, now the Byers comes out, Kirby comes back in, and the seven defensive backs are in again now for the Dallas defense. Look for a Kirby reception. Third and goal. Caught 
by McDuffie, but he's wrapped up shy of the goal line. Stopped at the two by Bill Bates. What's he do here? Larry Brown helping out on the tackle, and in comes the field goal unit. Stojanovic with what would amount to an extra point. He missed a 44-yard attempt at the start of the game when he slipped badly and just kicked a little low-line drive. But he got some good luck here, Dick. It's going to be placed right on the 10-yard line, which has been cleared off. So a 20-yard field goal for Stojanovic. And the kick is there. Miami comes out of the locker room and drives the length of the field, settles for a short field goal. Dallas by four. Well, it's not turkey, but you have to make two. <laughs> That's a four-quarter pretzel right there. 14 to 10. The Cowboys lead cut to four on that five-minute, 65-yard drive by Miami. Stojanovic with a 20-yard field goal, and now the kickoff, a sidewinder. Watch out, Kevin Williams. He has both down as touchdowns. And Dolphins uh, wrap him up at about the 27-yard line. Tonight on this Thanksgiving, NBC presents a special television celebration. The blockbuster comedy Home Alone, starring Macaulay Culkin, then singing the sensation Mariah Carey in her first network television special. Home Alone, Macra Mariah Carey, a great way for your entire family to spend Thanksgiving together with us on NBC tonight. Dallas on first down in the first half, average 4.3 yards. Nine passes, six rushes. Take damage. Aikman to the sidelines and off the mark to Michael Irvin, covered by Troy Vincent. I think the operative part of what you just said was fake to Emmett. He's back out there. He has not had a big game. He has remained the threat. And his uh, replacement, Lincoln Coleman, can't wait for Emmett to take a breather on the sideline. The Smith may be the Cadillac, but uh, they've got a Lincoln in the garage, don't they? <laughs> and he really came out rumbling in that second quarter. Ignited Dallas, down 7-0 at the time. Aikman down the middle. Incomplete. Open was Urban. Ball was low. And a little tussle between Klingbeil and a man trying to block him, Kevin Kogan. Kogan uh, from Washington is 6'7 and 319. He says what he's thankful for is being able to beat up somebody every Sunday and not go to jail for it. <laughs> that tells you that lineman's uh, <laughs> mentality. Actually, that's more of a that's more of a defensive lineman's mentality. But uh, here's the matchup right here. Let's see what happens. You see Klingbaugh comes on the game. And whoa. Logan pushes him right into the quarterback. Aikman batted at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted by Craig Vesey. Brian Cox got a hand on it, and Vesey, the former Steeler, almost picked up a free score. It was going to be a delay right across the line of scrimmage. It looked like it was going to be to, was it Emmett Smith? I couldn't really pick up the number, but Brian Cox puts a hit on Troy Aikman. Troy appears to be all right, but it is first down. Uh, it was Cross putting on the pressure, then it was batted at the line of scrimmage almost to VC, and so Jet punts for the third time. McDuffie at the 35 at the Miami. No one's hit a spiral yet. That one a dying spiral, and McDuffie dives across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Veteran Bates there to cover along with former Raider Elvis Patterson. 14-10 Cowpokes. We're back, and we showed you the klingbeil gogan match that led to something even more important. Watch what happens when Klingbeil makes contact with the left leg. Aikman gets up grabbing his hamstring, so Bernie Kosar is warming up on the sideline. We don't know if there's a serious pull, but Aikman has his jacket on on the Dallas sideline. On the 41-yard line, DeBerg off the of fake. Well, it was incomplete. That should be interference. Larry Brown, yes, hit him too soon. Mark Ingram had his arms pinned before the ball arrived. You can see that sleet falling much heavily, more heavily now. Yeah, it's not snow. It is sleet. And again, the throwing power of Steve DeBerg at 39-plus years old 
cannot be stated too much here as you see the interference call. He has done a wonderful job. That ball in, in this temperature is like a rock. He's got a big hand, a strong arm, and you'll watch the interference. Ingram keeps his feet underneath him. Yeah, before the ball is there, I think that's a very good call. 15 yards. Ball at the 44 of Dallas. 14-10 Cowboys. 9.24 left in the third quarter. That long arm take by DeBerg and wide open is Byers. And Byers extends his pass catch mark to 98 consecutive games. And he needs just one more for 400 in his career. 12 yards on that pickup. And again, you mentioned the play action fake really held the Dallas Cowboys at the line of scrimmage. And I think this he'll be he'll be uh, open the rest of the game too. We've uh, seen Dallas throw to Daryl Johnson and almost the same stuff. First down, 33 yard line. Knocked off his feet on a solid tackle by Darren Woodson, the second year safety from Arizona State. That last bounce that Higgs had to make, it should be coming right at you. That last bounce outside the one right here, that gave the uh, the defensive back the chance to get up there and cut his legs out from underneath it. And Miami's continued to try to run outside, had very little success inside except for the one run by Keith Byer. Byer. Wilson developing into a top secondary uh, principal for Jimmy Johnson. Ball at the 30. DeBerg. Hit from behind, incomplete is the call. No fumble. Although Rickman Webb trying to corral it back at the 45. Tony Tolbert from UTEP was the man who hit him from the blind side. Tolbert comes from the top of the screen. Good coverage downfield. Uh, gets inside Heller, 73 of the Miami Dolphins. And is able to wrestle Steve DeBerg to the ground. And yeah, watch Tolbert on Heller. An inside rush. Big, powerful pass rushers this Dallas Cowboy football team has. And Lett was there to fly swat the pass attempt. DeBerg is 11 for 19. Third and long. It's the Byers wide open again. And Byers is to the 20-yard line. First down Miami. Larry Brown got him out of bounds. And Dick, the small things that make a team successful. Mark Ingram, he could have made a block, but he avoided making the block. Right at the end of this play, because Ingram, if he makes this block, it would have been a block in the back. See him walk away? It keeps the play. It's a first down. And the 400th career catch for Byers. He and John L. Williams, the only NFL players who have caught 50 or more uh, as a running back, 50 or more passes each of the last five years, and apparently going to do it again. Byers skating to the line of scrimmage, and four Cowboys deny. Veteran Jim Jeffcoat is one of them. Well, receiving has been the key today, hasn't it? 71 on one carry from the 82 yards rushing. But when Miami got him, that took the pressure away from Keith Jackson. Now, how do you rotate to those two inside guys? Do you cover Jackson or do you cover Byers? He said he wanted to stay in Philadelphia, but the message went out when Reggie White was in time, went on to Green Bay and said, well, Maybe I better look to uh, seriously at Miami. Into the end zone incomplete. That was Irving Pryor trying to break free of Kevin Smith. Don Shula, Thanksgiving Day, 1962. One of the memorable games in NFL history. Remember when the Lions, well, you old timers like me, remember when the Lions beat the Green Bay Packers and Vince Lombardi. Lombardi's team would go on 14 and 1. Alex Harris and Darius McCord and uh, Roger Brown sacking Rock Bart Starr 11 times. It was Shula, the defensive team of Shula, who designed that and led to a head coaching job the next year in Baltimore. That, that worked. <laughs> Third down. The bird. Yeah. Oh, intercepted. What a catch by Brock Marion, the rookie from Nevada, Reno. In this weather, he speared that rock cleanly. Well, I don't, I don't blame Steve DeBerg for throwing this ball. This is a rocket. 
reinvents himself. And you're right, he picks it right out of the air. Huge turnover in favor of Dallas. Marion's first interception of the season. Happy Thanksgiving, Dallas. They deny the Dolphins who are going for the lead score. Brock Marion on the sideline. A heck of an interception. Not an easy catch in any set of circumstances. Watch here. This is the guy that should get it. This is where the interception takes place. Here's Marion. Watch the job that he does. But O.J. McDuffie on the outside on the delay is open. That may have been Steve DeVer's first mistake today. On a dry field in 80 degrees, that would have been a terrific yes. interception. Much less 26 and sleeting. From the 15, and Dallas maintaining a four-point edge. And here comes Lincoln Coleman, and he barrels out to the 27-yard line. Coleman just eating up icy chunks, 10 yards a pop. Nothing to this, just straight ahead. Johnston, the lead blocker, gets a shoulder on 51. Cox, helmet to helmet. He puts Lewis Oliver out. I mean, out on the field. 224 pounds, Oliver, and it was just like a little heavy snowball off the shoulder pads. <laughs> just like the dasher boards in arena football. <laughs> Big deal. I mean, you could see helmet to helmet, and when Lewis Oliver, when his body hits the ground, you can tell that he's unconscious. Oh, look. I mean, he absolutely... Watch, watch what happens here. You're going to see it come right. You're going to see it come right here. Watch Oliver come in. And after the collision, when he starts going to the ground, you know he's out. There is no mistaking it. His arms don't support him. Watch. Wham. Now watch Oliver. Don't watch Coleman. <laughs> Face down. I don't mean to laugh. I don't mean to laugh. But you're dead. Oliver's up. <laughs> Oliver's up. That's a that's the football the football player in you. Yep. That, as long as you're, you're okay. That was a. Uh, Head-on collision, and it was just as if uh, Lincoln Coleman said, hey, that's a, they didn't hit any harder yeah. with, with the Dallas, was it the Stars? Who were they, the Colts or something in the semi -pro? I think it was the Dallas Texans in the Arena League, but the semi -pro. It was the Dallas Colts in the, in the Semi-Pro League where he had to pay to get in yeah. to play. Got no money. He washed his own uniform. 14 to 10, 6-18 left in the third quarter. First down across the 25. Aikman back in at quarterback. Now to the 30-yard line goes Lincoln Coleman. Chuck Klingbeil makes the stop. Well, Aikman uh, may have had a tuck on that injured hamstring, but not serious enough to take him out. You know, he, he told us, too, when we talked to him, he said, I've always been very tight-muscled. Never had great flexibility. That's Bernie Coaster on the sideline. He was warming up there, but um, Aikman and his back problems and the surgery, there are people that believe uh, a pulled hamstring is inevitable after back surgery, especially for, for professional athletes. And they get down low on the big 250-pounder, and he gains only two. Now, Bernie Kosar uh, said that uh, we asked him about learning a whole new system so quickly in the crash course, and he said uh, he, he carried a mini novel on his wrist. <laughs> yeah, this has been a... This has been a crazy 10 days. He was almost with Miami. They are, his, he has a home. In fact, his wife, Babette, is now at their home only 10 minutes from the Miami Dolphin training facility. Yeah, right down the street from Dan Marino, as a matter of fact. And by the way, happy birthday to Bernie. He's 30 years old today. And while we're at it, Joe DiMaggio. Happy birthday, Joe to Joe, 79 in New York City. Aikman on third down. And it's Smith. Has the first down as he runs through J.B. Brown. Up to the 39. This is one tough football player, Emmett Smith. In fact, he is playing and delivering. How many men would not have uh, called, answered the call to duty today with what he is? With the swelling that he had, with the lack of mobility that he had, he had every right to tell his teammates, hey, you got to do it alone today. He would not give in to it franchise player has become part of the NFL terminology. This is a franchise, capital F, franchise player. They've been lots of time, and there's Coleman. He's to the 49-yard line, and now he can say to his folks over Turkey tonight, 
first rush and my first pass catch on Thanksgiving Day nationwide. Did you see me? Was I there? The play action fake. Looked like Novacek was the primary receiver again. Aikman doing a great job of looking around. Odom 93 finally there to make the tackle. Yeah, for this kid's background, I mean, some kids come into the NFL off the cover of Sports Illustrated, and some of them come off the loading dock of uh, various department stores, and Lincoln Coleman is one of them. And he gets 10 yards, first down, $100,000 a year. That's, that's a pocket change for some of the multimillionaires in sport, but for this man, Lincoln Coleman, that is fourth now. And you know what? Regardless of the outcome of this game, when they sit down and watch this film, they'll have to drag that kid out of that room. He's going to watch every single play in let's, super slow motion. Let's say hello to his grandchildren right now, because he's going to be playing it for them about 40 years. Hello, grandkids of Lincoln Coleman. Flag down, and Coleman, who shows good uh, agility as well for a big guy, uh, leaps to midfield but a flag down by the head linesman apparently against Miami offside by the defense the right defensive end five yard penalty repeat first down you know we're kind of documenting Lincoln Coleman here uh, he's not the first guy to come out of nowhere to have an impact on the Dallas Cowboys on a Thanksgiving Day game. Don't I remember a kid named Clint Longley? Yeah, the quarterback who saved a, a big victory for Dallas in their heyday with uh, Roger Staubach, and Longley took over and rallied the team. But he at least was someone out of a college program sure. that, that uh, although a free agent, as I recall, well, has, was some known factor. This the kid didn't play much ball at all. Long one by Aikman. Flag down Alvin Harper, and that flag could go either way. Harper was pulling at J.B. Brown more than Brown trying to grab at Harper. And that's the way it's going to go, offensive interference. This ball was in the air a long time, so there was a lot of contact between Brown and Harper. You see Harper's arm, the right arm, pushing away a little bit. And the flag is thrown about right there when his arm pulls down on J.B. Brown, and it is against the Dallas Cowboys. Pass interference by the offense number 80. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. At the start of this year, guaranteed he'd be in the Pro Bowl, joining the likes of Irvin and Bullet Bob Hayes, Tony Hill, Drew Pearson here in Dallas as wide receivers and he has taken quantum leaps uh, as a receiver started in the very first uh, game of the year against Washington when he had a career game five catches for 140 yards and a couple of touchdowns seven four high jumper mother a tremendous track athlete at Florida a and when she was young almost made the 64 Olympic team his mother underneath the Bill Johnson and this is good weather for a moose <laughs> The big factors today have been Keith Byers, Daryl Johnston, the big-footed, wide-footed, heavy-bodied uh, athletes who can keep their feet, still run, and Lincoln Coleman can't leave him out. And they've had big games today. Second down and two, 13 yards on the play. Emmett Smith back in. Denied the 40, stopped at the 41 and a half, so it'll be third down and about a yard and a half. Marco Coleman in on the tackle. Marco, one of many athletes, and it's uh, nice to see the athletes in all sports uh, answering the obligations to society who has delivered turkeys to needy families back in his hometown of Dayton, Ohio, as well as uh, down the Miami area. Marco goes home every week, too. With his mama home in Atlanta. And every time he gets time off, he heads back to Atlanta. I'm sure he'll be heading there for Thanksgiving sometime this weekend. 
They must have the yardstick in the wrong place because uh, now they're calling it a first down. Delay a game against Dallas. What happened there, Dick? I agree with you. The yardsticks were on the 40, and they got to the 41 and a half, and now it's first down at the 41. So hmm. perhaps the snow and sleep can adding to that confusion. I guess uh, we can allow the officials that. There, that's the end of the yard marker. That's 10 yards. That was a very interesting mark. Yeah, the elves are bigger this year, aren't they? <laughs> It'll be first down after the five-yard delay of game at the 48. 149 left in the third. 14-10 down. Aikman underneath to Daryl Johnston, tackled immediately by Dwight Hollier. A gain of about three. This drive started at the 15-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. We've had some interesting drives throughout this game, even with the bad weather. And neither team giving up totally what they're, they came into the game thinking they could do. Throwing the underneath stuff has worked all day. Jimmy Johnson from Fort Arthur, Texas. They have named a street, a boulevard, after Jimmy down in his hometown. Don Shula said he warned us last night. He likes his versatility, can block. This comes very close to going the distance, Dick. You see no one there, and Hollier makes a saving tackle. If Hollier doesn't get him on the ground, nobody else does. It is a first down inside the 30. DJ with seven catches now. Fourteen to ten. No check and Galbraith. Two tight ends in the game. To Lincoln Coleman, and for once, Miami stuffs the aspiring uh, young Coleman from Baylor University. It's a good day for Dallas kids. He's from Dallas, went to high school here. Kevin Williams is a Dallas product with the two cowboy touchdowns for Jimmy Johnson. As it ticks away, the end of three in Irving, Texas. Dallas 14, Miami 10. Back after these messages from your local station. With Bob Trumpy, Dick Enberg, welcome back to Texas Stadium. That's Scott Mitchell, whose left shoulder dislocated his pitching arm. But the good news is they feel that Mitchell will be able to start throwing, Don Shula told us, in a couple of weeks. So he should be ready for Miami the end of December when Buffalo comes in for what already looks to be a very critical game in the AFC East. Meanwhile, we go to the fourth, 14, Miami 10, Dallas on the march, inside the 35, and Aikman. The second receiver of Johnston, but couldn't quite hit him. And a flag is down. Well, I don't know why. The that, secondary. That thing was thrown way out of bounds. Against the offense. Dallas. Well, on this field, uh, I think everyone's kind of grappling to, to maintain balance, yeah. and you're going to get more of the shove and hold on both sides. Alvin Harper was nearest the flag. But that, that ball was thrown 10 yards out of bounds. Pass interference by the offense, number 80. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. See if we can pick it up, 80 on J.B. Brown, 37. These guys have been hand-fighting all day long. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Alvin Harper really has an excuse. You know where he went to high school? Where? Frost-free Florida. <laughs> the death isn't fair for a kid from Frost-free Florida to have to play in this environment. Oh, Mr. Enberg. 40-yard line, second down. Big yardage for Aikman. Down the middle, incomplete. Troy Vincent covering the skidding... Alvin Harper, or no, it's Michael Irvin. No flag. Jimmy Johnson Very certainly upset. wanted one. The 50-year-old Johnson showing his spirit. You know, Johnson, we were figuring out, you know, that, uh, it's frost-proof, is it? Not frost-free? Well, frost-proof, then. We get the point, though. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, John Francis, our producer, who knows more than all of us put together, is going to let us make us uh, not stretch a story. Johnson to stretch a story <laughs> is after Shula's record. All-time coaching win. He is. Aikman, third down, dumps it off underneath for Emmett. Having trouble with his footing, gets to the 34. That'll bring up fourth down, and they're well out of uh, field goal range. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Johnson is after Don Shula's well, well, victory's record. Slingshot Schneiderman figured it out. If Johnson wins 10 more games per season every year, he will have as many wins as Shula in the year 2021. <laughs> and he'll be 78 years old. And... Uh, According to Johnson, if he's still there, Steve DeBerg will be his quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Steve will only be 67. Oh, well, then we'll be there to broadcast it, right? That's if Shula doesn't win anymore. You know Shula's going to be going for not only this year, but plenty more. 2021. Well, it's, you know, time to reflect on Thanksgiving, and it's time to look ahead. Yes, really. So Jet and a 14-10 game, 14 minutes to go. from the 49, and uh, they may just take the delay. It's fourth down. They weren't trying for a five-yard offside. It's uh, fourth down and 20. Yeah, what difference does five yards make in this uh, particular instance? And they're, he's got good footing, too. They put it ahead. Miami declines anyway. That's uh, O.J. McDuffie. So finding I, I, the path. You can almost dictate where yeah. the players are going to stand on this day. But I would think if you're the punter of Dallas now, you kick it into the snow. You, you make McDuffie go one way or the other. Maybe you can get a turnover. Yeah, that's, uh, Tom Landry Lane right down the middle of Irving Kentucky State. Best kick of the day. Great effort by Brock Marion trying to down it. 34, but only 14 that time out. He's only 31, but uh, he's got a place reserved in Canton, Ohio. Dan Marino. He will not, will not be able to play the rest of the year, regardless of how that Achilles comes around. He's on injured reserve, cannot play, regardless of what happens to Miami going into and through the playoffs. They start at the 20, trailing 14 to 10. 13 and a half minutes to go. And DeBerg is passed. Casillas was there first, and Jeff Coat finished him off. The second sack of the game for Dallas. Steve DeBerg last night told us that Keith Jackson, the tight end, has a complete option route. He thought it was very unusual. Here's Jeff Coat right here. He's waiting on Jackson to run his option route at the bottom of the screen. Look where he's looking. And Jeff Coat gets inside Richmond Webb for the sack and a big loss. Jeff Coat, the veteran from Arizona State, his fourth of the year. He leads Dallas in sacks. And there's Jackson's pass pass. And you see Norton with excellent coverage. The bird gunning to Jackson incomplete. And James Washington covering, and DeBerg uh, slow getting up. You wonder, DeBerg, at 39, almost 40, 17 years in the league, if you count it up all the times, not just that he's been sacked, that he's been hit. Oh. It must be an incredible total. And, Dick, I don't think he wants to know what that number is. He is not interested in whatever that number is. Again, it's the same thing. Jeff Coat, a helmet right in the ribs. Ball at the 11-yard line. Doug Peterson from Northeast Louisiana. Same school that uh, sent Stan Humphreys to the NFL. Is the backup. Third and long and a floater, a wobbler that almost hit the umpire. It was deflected by Charles Haley, and Dallas is going to get great field position. Charles Haley on the outside pass rush. And the power move gets his arm up on DeBerg's arm. Gets him right on the sleeve. DeBerg can't follow through, and you're right. Dallas should have great field position. Haley only has three sacks, but he has 27 pressures this year. Kevin Williams, his touchdown on a punt return at the end of the first half. The difference in the game. Oh, he's got room. He gets it at midfield. 45-40. 
There was only one man to beat, and that was the kicker. 48-yard kick, 16 on the return. Chris Singleton saved the touchdown. Well, 45 remaining in the fourth quarter, 14 to 10 Dallas, and with Kevin Williams' punt return to the 34-yard line, Dallas a four-point lead, uh, looking for a touchdown that uh, could make it very difficult on Miami. Stumbles for a couple. Smith uh, appeared in the offseason on the Phil Donahue show. Did you, did you see that one? No, the I didn't. One I missed called that one. Single millionaire stud looking for love. And uh, John, Smith John. said after the fact they didn't tell me what the show was about. Yeah, right, sure. <laughs> He's a single multimillionaire. He's uh, leaving tomorrow for Pensacola. They have uh, Thanksgiving with the family down there in Florida. 13 for 36 today, a three-yard average for Smith, well under this kind of production, but his backup, Lincoln Coleman, was unable to assist those numbers. J.D. Brown reaching in. Good play on Michael Irvin. Brown from Maryland. He uh, leads the Dolphins with three interceptions this year. And, you know, of the two cornerbacks, Troy Vincent gets the most attention, considered the best coverage man, but J.B. Brown today, with a little grab of the shirt there, you know, you don't pull it off the shoulder pads, they don't throw the flag, but uh, Michael Irvin has been tied up with J.B. Brown most of the afternoon. James Harold Brown. Third down and seven. Emmett Smith, Brian Cox. Well, what a job by Brian Cox. You've got someone as elusive as uh, you can try to tackle in this league, and he, Cox keeping his uh, feet underneath himself, his jersey torn. Save the first down. Yeah, you can see that he's shadowing Emmett Smith, too. Follows him right out here. Keeps his shoulders square to Emmett Smith. Then uses the sideline for assistance. J.B. Brown also gets him, and it, it's uh, fourth down here. And are they going for it? Yeah, they're going for it. Again, playing the field position game, Dick. It's fourth and five, a long five. But lost his footing and with it. And they say no catch. No, they caught the ball. No, Kevin Williams. It. Yeah. But, no uh, first down. Fourth and uh, that would bring up. Uh, he was shy of the first yes. down, obviously, in the, in the uh, change of possession on downs. But what it does is it gives Dallas's defense five more yards to defend. So good choice by Jimmy Johnson. Missed by a yard. Miami down by four. Plenty of time left. Well, from our president, Dick Ebersol, John Paratis, our coordinating producer of football, Tom Roy, our executive producer, our director today, John Gonzalez, all the men and women who celebrate their holiday with you. NBC Sports, a happy Thanksgiving. Dave DeBerg and the Dolphins go to work at the 25-yard line, trailing 14 to 10. Mark Higgs, a couple of best, and a good tackle by Godfrey Miles getting some uh, duty at linebacker along with Darren Woodson. Well, Don Shula and the backup quarterback, he's picked older guys, usually Bob Greasy all his starts. But when needed, Earl Morrill came in and led the Dolphins to a Super Bowl. And David Woodley at 40 starts. Another gray beard. Don Strzok came in. 13-6 as a backup. Backup Steve DeBerg on second down. Underneath the Byers, and he's got running room. Byers into Dallas territory to the 45-yard line. Ken Norton drags him down. 28 more yards for... The former Eagle star. The two biggest plays Miami has had all day long have come at the hands of Keith Byers. He's the outlet receiver. It's a zone coverage, it looks like. And Brown can't get him down. And then it's the left arm of Ken Norton. Another big play by Keith Byers. The big guys in the backfield have had the biggest effect today for both teams. And the 46-yard line. First down Miami, trailing by four. Ten minutes to go. Underneath wide open is Kirby. And Kirby gets the ball. He's to the 20. A 
down. First down, Miami. 26 more. Miles and Smith make the tackle. Now, you know, maybe the Dallas Cowboys showed the Miami Dolphins what to do here. Let's just throw to the back side of the backfield. That's what Dallas has been doing. And you see everybody stop there. Both Woodson and Norton can't get up to speed to make the tackle. And then Kirby actually slips. Kirby with four catches today, 38 on the season for the rookie from Virginia. And Jimmy Johnson trying to spur this Cowboy defense. They spotted at the 21-yard line. Kirby protecting the ball runs into a, a pile and loses yardage. Chad Hennings, a great star at the Air Force Academy, flew a tank buster Warthog 45 relief missions during the Persian Gulf crisis, academic All-America. Hennings at 27 in his second year in the NFL. Uh, he didn't fly the Warthog at that size and weight. <laughs> He's put on about 40 pounds since he was in that A-10. But the thing about Jimmy Johnson, he does alternate his defensive linemen. He works them all in there. He's got seven, eight defensive linemen. They all play. Hennings in the middle now. Second and 12. Play action for the bird. He throws no one there. Mark Ingram, the closest receiver. Well covered by Kevin Smith. And Tony Tolbert pressuring the bird. Well, we talked about the starting quarterbacks and uh, the reserves. Well, Dan Marino, 154 consecutive starts, never missed a game as a pro, and other than the three strike games. Scott Mitchell, the one young man in the Shula history book, came in three and one, and then they're right back to the old timer, Steve DeBerg. And the backups uh, have done extraordinarily well. The bird underneath the Kirby, a juggling catch shy of the first down. He's inside the 15. See the Cowboys <laughs> pointing to the icy mark. Well, that again was the Dallas 4-7 defense in the back out of the backfield. I think Shu is making his decision here. How much do we go? How far? How far are he saying? Looks to be uh, a good yard. Boy, they just did Miami a favor here. The officials are taking time out to measure and it'll give Don Shula and his staff just a, a couple of seconds to collect their thoughts as to what they're going to do here. 29 and 8. That, that's, uh, I mean, that's a mark of why Shula is one of the brilliant football minds uh, and will go down as uh, arguably as the greatest coach ever. Uh, I agree. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson said, oh, that's, that's a good two yards. That's a good two yards that they've got to make. But Jimmy Johnson said the, the sign of a good coach was a team that did not turn the ball over and was seldom penalized. And he said, that's Don Shula, and it's always been the Miami Dolphins. And Johnson studied Shula well while at the University of Miami. He would go to the, and his assistants especially, would go to the Dolphin practices and pick their brain. They're going to kick a field goal. Boyanovich out of Doug Peterson's hold from a close to be uh, outside the 21. Field goal attempt by Stoyanovich, who has missed one when he slipped from 44, made the short one from 20. This to cut the lead to 14 13. Well done. 7.58 remains here in Irving, and the Miami deficit is down to one. Into the eyes of Kevin Williams, a Dallas native, on this kickoff, and it's his punt return with seconds left in the first half, 64 yards for a touchdown. That is the difference in the game. Miami pulling to 14-13, just under eight minutes to go. Terrific kick by Stojanovic that goes to Williams at the seven. 25-30, and he's all the way to the 40. Fumbles, but he was down. No fumble. Recovered by Bernie Parmalee, but he was down a 32-yard return, and Kevin Williams seems to be running in a different league on this icy stuff. This is the end of the half. He carefully embraced the punt, made a couple of quick moves, caught the Dolphins sliding one way while he cut the other, and untouched. 27 seconds left. That made it 14-7, to and then... The artistic uh, celebration, the slide. Well, the thing on kicks is if you can keep going north to south, goal line to goal line, 
They're in a lot better shape than those defenders, Dick. They give him uh, progress to the 38-yard line. Aikman. The Johnson tackled by Hollier after a yard gain. Dwight Hollier, who says his all-time favorite the Buffalo Bills and O.J. Simpson. Yes, yes. Going back to North Carolina to get a master's degree in psychology. And, of course, this is his first game at outside linebacker replacing John Grimsley, who was an inside linebacker. He played Offered all uh, earlier in the year. Second down, about eight and a half. Nine catches for Johnston. Gives him 36 for the year. So Daryl Johnston, Lincoln Kennedy for the for Coleman, excuse me, Lincoln Coleman for the Dallas Cowboys. But Lincoln Kennedy appreciates the ball. <laughs> He's an offensive back a little bigger. And Keith Byers for Miami. The big factors today offensively for these two teams. Very classic has not played. Third down and six. Aikman underneath again to Johnson. He gets the first down. He belts into the 48 of Miami. That's good for the first down. Brian Cox, 51, made the tackle, and the Cowboys continue to go. And, and I'll tell you what, watch what Johnson does. Just a little circle route. And the defenders, you know, they've got people behind him they got to worry about. Johnston just comes up underneath. What a great play this has been all day long for the Dallas Cowboys. And it's a play you can use in perfect weather. You don't have to just use it when it's snowing, Dick. And the clock continues to run. That's the enemy of the Dolphins. First down at the 49 of Miami. Emmett Smith hit first by Craig Vesey and then secured by Cox. Well, Don Shula made a big decision there, taking the three points, putting it on his defense to stop the Dallas Cowboys. He's still got three timeouts left. Stop the Dallas Cowboys with enough time left for the offense to get the ball back in the end zone or for a field goal. Showed great confidence in his defense, but Dallas doing a good job in this drive, Dick. Well, the last drive they had for over eight minutes, they didn't score any points, but maintained control. Aikman going long. For Harper, batted down by J.B. Brown, who had a chance for the interception at the five-yard line. Well, I admire the Dallas Cowboys for trying these. Some teams call them nine roots. Some team call them teams call them go patterns. Some teams call them fade patterns. These two guys have been connected all day long. Third down and eight. Troy Aikman. In this winter storm in Dallas, 27 for 40. Good. One touchdown, one interception. 40 attempts. I think that's the second high of the year. Just a few more against Buffalo in the last second game of the year. Big play. Third down. Right down at Smith, and he couldn't put on the brakes. That's where Jarvis Williams collided with him. And on a dry field, that's kind of play where... Emmett Smith is able to break and jerk sharply and get you more yards, but not on this field. And he comes up limping a little more than normal this time. And the gamble that Don Shula took has paid off to this point. They are going to get the ball back. John Jett to punt. McDuffie clearing a little path for himself down at about the 12-yard line. the side of the foot, but it takes a good Dallas roll. Real good. Down to the seven-yard line. 37-yard punt. The Dolphins with the ball, a long way to go, but enough time to do it. Hi, I'm Steve DeBerry. I want to wish you a happy, what day is it? <laughs> I always said Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's had a lot on his mind and he took another take and did it again yeah. I mean, now the pressure of going 92 yards or less actually he'd have to get the ball down to about the 20 for a field goal that would give a Miami the lead he's 15 for 28 today 222 yards he's just a handful of yards away from moving into the number 9 spot in NFL history in yards passing the 
flat. Ingram, the intended receiver, covered by Kevin Smith. Dick, it's very obvious that the footing is getting worse and worse and worse. Last drive, we saw the Dallas Cowboys continually throw the circle route to Daryl Johnston. It is, the precipitation is still coming down. They got to get Byers and Jackson on those A and B circles over the middle. Ingram right. Irving Fryer, who hasn't caught a pass today, is to the left. There it goes to Kirby, and Kirby dives across the 15 to the 16. He'll be about three yards shy of a first down. Yeah, they had Byers up in kind of the double wing formation to spread the defense a little bit. And actually, DeBerg had a choice. Here's Byers right here. He runs the crossing route. Kirby does this. And DeBerg has got his choice. Now, that will work because... See, Kirby, come out there. See, that will work because they're moving... North to south, goal line to goal line. And third and about a yard and a half. And they get to Kirby, who will find a ball on the ball, and Dallas recovers. Darren Woodson on Kirby's second fumble. Cowboys get it at about the 25. Dickey makes a great run. Watch the little cutback here. But somebody really popped it. 37 Washington really nailed him. Well, Kirby, who fumbled in the first quarter in Dallas territory, gives it up at the Miami 25, the fourth Miami turnover. Woodson got the ball. Washington got the hit. I think forced fumbles ought to be an official NFL statistic. That one that's overlooked and that decides a lot of games and that would be a big stat for James Washington on that hit that's his longest run of the day for 10 11 yards down to the 20 line of scrimmage was the 30 yard line and this is an all time gutty performance by Emmett Smith uh, yesterday we talked to him, and you, you said to him, hey, you know, Barry Sanders has got a big lead on you. And Emmett said, well, wait a minute, you know, people can get hurt. I'm, I'm going to try to do the best I possibly can, and we wish Barry Sanders the best, but Emmett Smith is healthy. Barry Sanders hurt his knee. Emmett Smith wants that rushing title big time. Despite missing the first two games on the holdout, he has 48 yards rushing today, 46 on receiving, and that's on a very, very sore muscle injury. First down, Smith again. And the beauty of Smith, cold weather, rainy weather, hot weather, he just doesn't fumble much. Yeah, timeout. There's one of the timeouts used by Miami. 2.38 left, and the Cowboys deep in Miami territory with a one-point lead. Well, fumbles, turnovers certainly expected on this field, these conditions. But this might have been a forced fumble. Washington's hit on a dry field. Now, that was a great hit by Washington. Perfectly timed. And you can also, it appears to me that Washington makes the attempt to make contact with the ball first. He's got that forearm in there. He wanted to get him on the ground, but also try to get that ball loose. And we're talking about Emmett Smith. we got to combine him along with our friend Lincoln Coleman. And the two of them have combined for... Is that just rushing? That's right. Rushing Emerson. and receiving. The Coleman and Emma Smith have accounted for 164 yards today. Not bad out of that spot. Emma Smith, the lone uh, running back on second down. Fake throw to Johnson. Tackled by Lewis Oliver. Short gain, a couple yards. Down to the 15 yard line. 11 catches a career day in that regard for Daryl Johnston, the fullback. Timeout, the second spent by Miami. 2.25 left. Gives us a chance to remind you coming up this weekend, not only pro football on Sunday, but Saturday. There's one of the great coaches of all time. Eddie Robinson, the Bayou Classic. Grambling and Southern go at it in the Superdome in New Orleans. Be with us at 2 o'clock Eastern time. 11 on the West Coast for the renewal of the Classic. 
Now, his record will never be broken either. Number of wins by a college coach. He and Don Shula will stand alone as the uh, all-timers in most wins at the collegiate level and the professional level. The people tuning in now and didn't know the weather conditions and seeing that field must wonder what in the world <laughs> happened to Irving. I know they had a fire in the uh, in the luxury boxes a couple of weeks ago, but uh, what's happened to the surface here? Of course, unlike the dome stadiums, this one has a hole in the roof. And it was intentional. Well, was it so that God could watch the Cowboys play? Wasn't that the intent? But they forgot about asking Mother Nature. Third down, a short five for Aikman, leading 14-13. Dolphins have spent two timeouts. They need a stop now. This throw is caught and dropped. Almost a touchdown for Harper. Man, they are trying to get Harper the ball, aren't they? J.B. Brown and Troy, no, it's Troy Vincent this time that uh, was on the coverage. This is almost arm wrestling down the sideline, and Harper almost makes the catch. Again, the, the hand fighting between Vincent and Harper, almost a one-handed grab. That would have been a beautiful catch. Well, Eddie Murray trying to clear a spot for a field goal. He'll kick it from about the 22, 32 yards. This is not easy by any means, considering the footing. If successful, it forces Miami to go all the way for a touchdown to win. 32 yards. And he's wide right. So the Dolphins need only a field goal. They've got two minutes, 16 seconds, and one timeout in which to do it. Dick, I think Eddie Murray was ho so uh, concentrating on his proper footing. I mean, this ball doesn't, he doesn't push it. That just looked like to me where he aimed. He was more interested in exactly how good his footing was going to be and forgot to line up properly. Life. Life for the Miami Dolphins. Two teams battling to stay on top of their division. Miami tied with Buffalo 8-2. and two, Best records in football. Dallas tied with the Giants at 7-3 and three in the NFC. East. One point separates them. And DeBerg from the shotgun. To Kirby. Short yardage as Woodson was played a terrific game in the Dallas secondary. Darren Woodson makes another play. Uh, the Cowboys' choice here is to go with the seven defensive backs. Miami's had great success against that. And that is the two-minute timeout. 39-year-old Steve DeBerg drafted in 1977 in the 10th round by Dallas. So Landry, McCulley, O'Connor, Bill Walsh was his coach at San Francisco, Dan Reeves in Denver at Tampa, John McKay and Lehman Bennett, Frank Gans, Kansas City, Marty Schottenheimer, Sam White this year and last at Tampa, now Don Shula. So he's been able to pull a lot of resources into this 39-year-old body, and he's calling upon them now. Second and eight, two minutes to go. Down by one. Underneath he goes. Short yardage to Byers. That'll be uh, close to a first down. And with that throw, DeBerg in yardage, and he's the one that doesn't fit on that all-time list. He just passed Kenny Anderson, number nine all-time. go through his hands. Mark Ingram had it at about the 44-yard line. So did Brock Marion. He almost had it too, Dick. Marion is the man underneath in coverage. Watch. Whoop through his hands, and Ingram can't catch it either. It's fourth and one. Down for DeBerg and Miami. Woodson again. What a game. Important spot here. Important spot. Did Byers get enough? Yes, he got a yard and a half and a first down. Oh, my. Time, though, working against the Dolphins, who need a field goal from Stoyanovich. Can DeBerg get him downfield? It's caught by Fryer, his first of the day, and he slides into the Dallas bench with a first down at the 41-yard line of Miami. Now, we saw during commercial 
Steve DeBerg called three, maybe even four plays for his offense. They've now executed those four. They get the ball out of bounds, and he looks to the sideline for the next three. Then there's also the automatic play. So he's got two in his head. They spot it closer to the 43 in Miami territory, but another set of downs for DeBerg, who has only one timeout left. Oh, almost intercepted by Leon Left. It looked as if it was a screen. It yes. was it well set up except for left. He may have saved a very big game. Keith Byers was the intended receiver. You'll see him coming to the picture. 41 just across the line of scrimmage. Great quickness by Leon Lett. And it destroys the play. And Byers had three green jerseys with him going downfield. And nothing but defensive backs in front of him. One minute, three seconds to go. Dallas 14, Miami 13. Underneath, complete, Keith Jackson, close to a first down at the 49 of Dallas. And the Cowboys now have all the defensive backs they own in the game. Eight. The bird from the shotgun. And here for a man who's only been in this Woo! offense two weeks, really tough to do any ad lib calls. Caught by McGuffey, who gets out of bounds. A first down. The out of bounds is crucial to stop the clock with 36 seconds. And the ball spotted at about the Miami 48. Dick, your Dallas point, 48, excuse me. Your point about DeBerg handling this, he's part of the, the new genre of football is the signals from the sideline. So not only learn, learn the plays, but the signals coming from the sideline. The bird has handled this all beautifully. Meanwhile, Stoyanovich, one of the clutch kickers in the game. He's made nine out of ten pressure field goals to win or tie games, looking for a chance. 14-13 Dallas. The bird incomplete. Keith Jackson at the 40 of Dallas. One timeout is left for the Dolphins. And they do want to save that for Stoyanovich. He's already missed a 44-yarder, right? He, that was the very first attempt of the game when he went sliding on his backside just as he planted and just kicked a little low-line drive into the defense. Yeah, those, those numbers just all mean nothing today. They need about 25 yards, Dick. Second and 10. Screen to Byers. Fires bolts to about the 30-yard line, and timeout is going to be called by DeBerg. So they'll use an incomplete pass to stop the clock should they get uh, close enough for Stoyanovich. That is uh, not enough for a first down. It'll bring up about third and uh, one and a half as we try to maybe two, third and two. Well, I don't know. They're going to measure now. Where, where we got it here? About the 36-yard line? I'm having trouble figuring it out. It's pretty well covered. Well, let's see. 45-40. 30, uh, 36. Okay. Is that the 39? Let's try from this end. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. About the 37-yard line, 38-yard line, I believe. And it's not enough for the first down, as you saw, and brings up third down. So that would be almost impossible. Stoyanovich, on a, in good conditions, has kicked a 59 and a 58-yard field goal. But uh, not on a field that offers no footing. Now, I don't think Don Shula is going to get that guy that did this to him in New England a number of years ago to come out and sweep away all the snow and give the kicker a chance to win the game. Now, no timeout, so... The Berg is shackled by that condition and has 21 seconds. Try to hit someone for a first down deep. This is the 11th play of the drive. To Byers. Gets a block. Gets out of bounds. What a play. And has Byers delivered big for Miami today. And that is out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Watch what happens. play. Dick, watch what happens. Bates, 40, tries to hold Byers up. Byers runs right over Billy Bates, and then Bates can't catch him. What a huge play. The fullbacks today for both sides 
have been the key factor. And this uh, has become a memorable Thanksgiving Day game. Will it go in the win column to Dallas or Miami? Stoyanovich will decide it as he will try this field goal, which will be 40 yards. 40 yards. Doug Peterson to hold. Bewildered, dazed, Jimmy Johnson leaving the field. The victory so close to be stolen, to be ripped away from away the, the Dallas Cowboys. And now it's time for the Hager wrinkle-free cotton super play of the game. Dallas had it won after the blocked field goal by Jimmy Jones until this super play of the game. Jones, 97, gets a hand on it and blocks it. If no one touches it, Dallas wins. Look, they're saying, stay away from it, stay away from it. But Leon Lett comes in, kicks it free, and Miami covers. Stojanovic kicks the 25-yard field goal, and the Dolphins go home with a 16-14 win. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This has been NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League.